both teams are on the ice of Memorial Coliseum. You may have read in the paper that General Manager Brian Shaw was pursuing a possible trade at the All-Star Game, uh, trying to trade maybe some offense for some defense. So far, nothing has been completed. The talks are continuing, but uh, I think that other teams may have a hard time coming up with what Brian is looking for. We'll talk more about that as our night continues as well, but no trades have been made. Portland and Tri-Cities on this Wednesday night. Hope you can find a place to park. With the auto show in 10, it's a little rough. And that's our pregame show. The Winterhawks and the Tri-Cities Americans. Action continues in just a moment. Welcome to Nick's, where they play to win and indulge in their favorite new amusement. Nick, your play. Alisa. Nick, switched games since our days in Paris, huh? Yeah, it's Pepsi 21. Pepsi 21? Explain the game. With pleasure. Look inside cans and two-liter caps of any Pepsi product for numbers and symbols. Win instantly or get them to add up to 21. Look, either way, you win 21 bucks and a chance at the big prize. Yes, a Pontiac Grand Prix SE. So, Elisa, how long has it been? Cut the tables off. Now, oh, look, I made 21. Au revoir, Nick. My plane's waiting. It may again, Stan. Join the thousands of winners. Play Pepsi 21 and you could walk away a winner, too. Win cash by playing Pepsi 21. And by coming to the 8th Annual Pepsi Fred Meyer $10,000 Dash for Cash on Saturday, February 11th, when the Hawks host Seattle. You can be one of three fans to go on the ice and dash for 10,000 silver dollars. It's on now. It's the annual Skipper's Seafood and Chowderhouse KWJJ Power Play Contest. And it means you can win tons of cash just by visiting Skipper's and listening to the Winterhawks on KWJJ. Here's how it works. Just go to any Skipper's Seafood and Chowderhouse from Longview to Salem and fill out a Power Play Contest entry blank. Select which Winterhawk you think will score a Power Play goal in the period your name is called. If he scores, you win cash. The jackpot starts at $100 and jumps 25 bucks every game there is no winner. If you don't win the jackpot, you still win a pair of tickets to a future Winterhawk home game. It's fun, it's exciting, and Winterhawk fans have soaked skippers for over $3,000 in the last five years. And skippers loves it. So get to any skippers now through February 8th and sign up for the Skippers Seafood and Chowder House KWJJ Power Play Contest. Then listen to see if you're a big cash winner. Winter Hawk Country, 1080 AM KWJJ presents Portland Winter Hawk Hockey. Sponsored by Pepsi, Portland's favorite choice. By Fred Meyer, you'll find it at Freddy's. By Henry Weinhardt's Private Reserve, Portland's premium beer. By Papa Aldo's Pizza, pizza at its moment of perfection. And by the Oregon Lottery, you could be the one to win. The Winter Hawks are also sponsored by Bob Lampier's Beaverton Honda and Beaverton Hyundai. By Barnes Foods, by the Oregonian, by Value Right Pharmacies, and by your locally owned, independently managed tire factory. Winter Hawk Hockey, also sponsored by the original California Cooler, by Franz Bread, by Lipton Lowry Products, Skipper's Seafood and Chowder House, and by AMP and Mini Markets. Participating advertisers include Guaranteed Pest Control, Direct Mail Services, the family of products produced by General Foods, Safeco Insurance Company, First Interstate Bank, Tony Roma's A Place for Ribs, The Wall, House of Hardtop, Shiloh Inn, Lions Restaurants open 24 hours, John's Import Auto, Columbia Bookkeeping Tax Experts, The Daily Journal of Commerce, Century Pharmacy, Conyers Hockey Hut, STP Car Care Products, Communication Enterprises of Oregon, Golden Star Boneless Turkey, DNF Plumbing, Majestic Cleaners, and Devolt Unitech Auto Body. Now, for the play-by-play, -play, the voice of the Winterhawks, Dean Broman. And welcome, everybody. Action just underway here at the Coliseum. The Winterhawks breaking in on Tri-Cities goaltender Frank Perlin. Frank Perlin starting in goal, I believe, or is it Olaf Kolzig? Nope, it is Kolzig in goal. Olaf Kolzig starting in goal tonight. And a shot deflected into the stand, so we'll have a face-off in the Tri-City zone. Let us tell you quickly at the top that Crystal Powell of Vancouver, Washington is our Skipper's Power Play contestant. $200, is that right, Ron? Yeah, $200 in the jackpot for Crystal from Skipper's and Scott Maiden is our money man. Let's set the stage. Referee tonight is Tom Hansen. And your linesmen are Jack Kennedy and Don Perry on the ice for the Hawks now. It's John Poston, Scotty Maiden, Perry Black. Mike Moore and Kevin Jorgensen. And Eric Batscan will start in goal for the Portland Winterhawks tonight. Eric Batscan is in goal. The puck is in the Tri-City zone. LeBron with it. Moving up the boards, not out. Moore trying to keep it alive, but could not do so. Puck slides to center edge. Nice to be back on. 
after missing a couple of games and we hope the voice holds out tonight you're surely still fighting that nagging virus that has been uh, i guess off and on since christmas bothering me and now the winterhawks are offside at the tri-cities line clouston Leiden, and Harry Black on the forward line for the Hawks. Now, Ken Hodge is going to do juggling tonight, and with the explicit purpose. You heard about him in the pregame show talking about James Hamish Black. Ken Hodge tonight is a man with a mission. He's going to give Hamish every opportunity in the world to get some goals, get some points, and hopefully get out of the doldrums that he's been in as of late. And we'll see if it works. Tonight, he's going to play on Dennis Highland's line. All right, Buck is in the... Portland zone and in the corner Moore will have to chase it down he was knocked out of his helmet taken in a corner to LeBron LeBron and Barnes are going to pry the puck loose Jakes keeping it alive on the right point so LeBron he scored the overtime winner the last time the two teams played one another in Tri-Cities a couple of weeks ago it was two to one in overtime for Tri-Cities and a tremendous hockey game one of the better ones that I have seen played in tier one hockey Barnes at center ice cutting in on Thudium stop drop pass into the slot is knocked away, and Calvin Thudium has got it for Portland. Thudium ahead to Leahy. So we got Thudium, Leahy, and Fleetwood. Yep, yep, another different line combination. I think they're going to be all different tonight, Ron. We're going to see a completely different setup. Biafor slap shot for the point is blocked. We got Mitchell and Biafor together on the blue line. That is different. I think Ken Hodge has shuffled the cards, has he not? Indeed he has. And this is the way it came off the deck. Everybody's going to play with everybody else tonight as Jake's pops it in. Hawks have been a team that's been struggling quite a bit really since November. They've only played 500 hockey since November 13th. Now the puck is at center ice and it's played into Portland territory by Krauss. By a four, skated into the corner. Chad by a four, risked into center ice out of the reach of Holland. Krauss gets it ahead to McNutt. And he's bumped off the puck of the blue line, swooping in Delcourt. He'll try to set it up for Tri-City. Delcourt. And Fry on the board. Spins away from Hamish. A drive. That's bad. Save. And he'll cover. Well, and the pushing with Biafor and Greg Delcourt. Now we've got a bit of a row going on. That was one case that Ken was talking about a little bit in the pregame show about Hamish. We don't want to throw the spotlight totally on him. But in that particular instance, it was his man, Rick Fry that he had covered for a moment and Fry was able to spin away from him and get a pretty good scoring chance on and that's what Ken Hodge is hoping that Hamish will get his off offensive game back together and that'll bring back a little of his concentration defensively. Well, Biafor is going to the box. So is Steve McNutt. Greg Delcourt should be going and Dennis Holland is going to be going to the box as well. Holland wrapped up Delcourt in the middle of uh, the exchange out in, right in the Portland Crease. And everything should, by and large, match up possibly an extra two for Tri-Cities, as it was Delcourt that first got upset. we like to say hello to an ailing Winterhawk fan, season ticket holder David Schock. David Schock was roller skating last Saturday night and broke his leg right before you started your broadcast run up in Victoria. Unfortunately, he was about ready to listen to your broadcast. He is home listening tonight. David Schock and the radio gang here at the Coliseum. We miss you, David. Hope you get back soon. A double minor for roughing. Okay, Delcourt gets four. Number 15, Steve McNutt, two minutes for roughing. For Portland, number 11, Chad Biafor, and number 15, Dennis Holland, both two minutes for roughing. Once again, so the Hawks get a power play. Delcourt, a double do. for roughing. McNutt, Biafor, and Holland, all two minutes for roughing. Serving the additional two minutes will be number 20, Kevin Robinson. Time in the penalty, 2.50. So, as we thought, if there was going to be an extra two, it would go to Delcourt, and there was. So the Winterhawks are on the power play, and it will be Hamish Black taking the face off since Dennis Holland is in the box. Hamish will work between Troy Mix and Brent or uh, Scotty Might. No, Terry Block on the far side. Fleetwood wiggling his way in on power play now. We got Crystal Powell of Vancouver and Scotty Might is the money man. He's not out there right now. Here's a pass in front intended for Black out of his reach. Hamish a shot, pad save to the corner by Colson. Hamish got loose in front of the net. Now the puck is cleared, not out by Jake Mitchell. Nice job on the right point holding it in, but then Tri Cities does stack it up and Kotowitz. Shoots it down the ice. Fleetwood on his horse, wrapped up by Rennie. Tried to shake him off, does. Good job by Fleetwood. 
as he was able to get the puck away from Rennie. Kyle Mitchell, swing it out of the right wing boards. Mitchell with a puck. Sashay to center right. Hit the red line. Now zigzag and curl into the Tri-City zone. Wait a minute. Offside. Yeah, Hamish got a, about a half step into the zone too early. He was trying to cut the defense on an angle and really did a good job. And had he been able to maintain it on side, uh, I think he still might have been able to get that far open. You might want to talk about the Tri-Cities front office situation. They have a new member of their front office, Assistant General Manager Sheldon Ferguson. Sheldon Ferguson, who is General Manager of the Seattle Thunderbirds for a couple of years, will be the new Assistant GM of the Tri-Cities Americans. And their head coach, John Oliver, is not here tonight. They're being uh, coached by former U.S. Minster Bruin, uh, Jerry Johansson. We understand uh, Mr. Oliver having problems with ulcers yep not able to come uh, due to stomach ailments and jerry johansson you'll remember him from just a couple of years ago wore the number six as i recall in a new westminster Bruin uniform big big guy and uh pretty good defenseman yep and a tough one he had some uh, pretty significant altercations in his career against several portland players so i know the the diehard Winterhawk fans are aware of Jerry Johansson. So he is running the bench tonight for the Tri-Cities Americans. He is their normal assistant coach. So he is used to being behind the bench. He normally helps John Oliver behind the bench, but tonight he's running the show. All right, Mitchell cross ice. And it was a tenant for Terry Black knocked away and cleared by Sean LeBrun back to the Portland line. No score, 16-12, remaining in the first period. Mitchell left wing to Terry Black. Hustling in, spray at the faceoff circle. Out of the point, and they bring it outside the line. Fleetwood, errant pass to Mitchell. So the Hawks have got to start over again. Yeah, he's looking for the knot hole in his stick because he thought he was rolling it along the blue line, and it came uh, well outside the line. Now the puck has got to be chased back into Winterhawk territory again. 40 seconds to go on a power play. Mitchell's got it. Over to Fleetwood. Nudge it ahead. Terry Black cut able to come up with a pass, and Spinrass shoots it to center ice for Tri-Cities. Black right back for Portland. Terry, spin at the right point, stuff it in the corner. First man there, Hamish, back pass to Mick. Hey, throw it out in front, miss Terry Black. Nice try. Almost a bingo, bango, bongo play, but it didn't quite click. 18 seconds remaining on a Portland power play. Moore behind his own net. Moore spin a pass to Jorgensen. Outlet to Scotty Miden. He's our money man. 10 seconds to go on a power play. Miden, Leahy, back to Miden behind the net. He turns, he passes to Clouston. In front, Leahy, deflection stopped by Colson. Two seconds to go on a power play, and the Americans will clear to center ice to their full strength again. Mitchell Lapac loses to Barnes. Barnes to Duval. He scores. Murray Duval. Pat's guy got a piece of it, but it slipped between his pads and into the twine of the Tri Cities Americans. And a whole bunch of Tri Cities boosters are here tonight, and they're going wild with pom poms down below. It is one to nothing, Tri Cities. Boy, they got a lot of people here for a Wednesday night. Don't these people work for a living? Yeah, huh? indeed they do. Well, <laughs> I, I guess that's not a very good comment about uh, that whole area up there, huh? Yeah, you just <laughs> shut the reactor down and come on down. Yeah, you know? I guess that's the way it goes. Murray Duval, assist to number 14, to Barnes. Duval from Barnes, time of the goal, 4.57. And for Murray Duval, it is his 11th goal of the season. Well, the Hawks made a very poor play at center ice that time, got caught on transition as Tri-Cities obtained full strength again, and they gave it to Barnes, wrong thing to do. One to nothing, Tri-Cities. First shot by Clouston went wide into the corner, Duval in his own zone. Wrapped up by Clouston, a loose puck behind the Americans' net, fired along the boards to Troy Kennedy. Shovel it out, no. Mitchell, keep it alive, stuff it in behind the Tri-City zone. Winter Hawks have had... A lot of possession in Tri-Cities territory, but have not been able to generate anything. Timeout, 14.28 to go first period. It's one to nothing, Tri-Cities. We'll be back at 30. Don't you love the smell of breakfast cooking on a lazy morning? Lean, meaty bacon sizzling in the pan? You can make breakfast that good anytime with Bar-S Bacon from your Fred Meyer food department. Bar-S Bacon always cooks up crispy brown with the delicious flavor and aroma that makes breakfast the best meal of the day. Why not pick up some Bar S bacon at Fred Meyer today? Remember, only the best is branded Bar S. And you'll find it at Freddy's. At all stores except Stark and Sixth and Alder. All right, face off now to the right of Kolzig, and the Hawks win the draw. By a four, slot blocked in front. And it's Devin Dirksen. 
Here to center ice to Steve Rennie. Now they move it to LeBron to Spinrath. Good puck movement, but Spinrath was in too deep. Mick drags him down behind the net, but they do center. And a big save by Batscan on Jake. Jake came in for the point to take that pass. Point blank range, and Batscan steered it aside. Flint's off behind his own net now. Portland down one to nothing, and Tri-Cities appears to be a team hungry tonight. They've only got one road win since November 12th. Now we're going to have an icing call against Portland and the fans and the over-the-glass gang are steamed. Well, they thought that uh, maybe Dennis Holland got roughed up a little bit by Devin Dirksen. It was a clean play on the part of both. Holland was trying to cut Dirksen from off the puck, and Dirksen did touch it up. So we will have a face-off back in the Portland zone. Well, we have a small crowd tonight, and I hope I'm not talking to anybody that had terrible time finding a parking place. We do have the auto show in town. We hope that you will show persistence on Friday night with Fritz Alberts here as we will uh, encourage you once again to take mass transit or carpool on Friday night. It's going to be limited parking. Sunday shouldn't be as bad because the auto show does end at 6 o'clock. That's when the game starts. So theoretically, there should be better parking on Sunday there night with Victoria's here. We hope. But it will be a problem Friday night. No question, everybody. So make your plans ahead of time. And make sure you're here. Don't miss the game Friday night. Prince Albert's only trip here all year. They wallop the Winterhawks 13 to 6 back in uh, Prince Albert about two months ago. And you're going to want to see that game. We're going to get a penalty against Tri-Cities. Fleetwood has the puck. Fleetwood, red line, blue line, into the slot, looking for Hamish. No, he put a wrist shot on that went high and wide. Middle stack keeps it alive. Centers one, a shot, goal! and he put it right on Clouston's stick, who one time did, and the Winterhawks have tied it up on a delayed penalty goal. They won't get the power play, and I still don't understand that rule, but it is a rule. If you score on the delayed penalty, you don't get the power play, and it's tied one to one. Clouston, 6.45 in the period, scored by number 27, John Clouston. 23rd goal of the year for Captain John. Joey Middlestaff. Clouston from Middlestaff, time of the goal, 6.45. They will add an assist to Brent Fleetwood. Middlestack kept it alive, but it was Fleetwood who made the play in front to Clouston. And now we're going to get another Tri-Cities penalty, I do believe. High sticking. Nope. Going to go against Rob Flintoff. Portland had the puck. All right. So high sticking behind the play. And the Americans will get their first power play. Number seven, Rob Flintoff. Two minutes for high sticking. Flintoff for high sticking. Time in the penalty, 7.03. So this will be the first Tri-Cities power play of the game. They are the worst power play team in the Western Hockey League at 19.2%. That is dead bottom of the barrel. But make no mistake, they do have firepower out there. Stu Barnes, Greg Spinrath, who will be probably nose-to-nose -nose with Eric Badsgun. Yeah, I'm frankly surprised because these five guys on the ice are a good power play unit. LeBron... Barnes, they got Jakes at the point with Spinrath. I'm not sure I put Spinrath at the point. Now they're going to crowd the net with Spinrath. They got him underneath as LeBron goes to the point. Shot save, bad guy, puck to the corner. Barnes, he can make it ever, everything happen. Barnes to the point to LeBron. Now they go to Jakes, LeBron, Jakes just inside the line. They whip it over to Kennedy. Kennedy to LeBron, slap shot handled by bad guy, puck to the corner. Spinrath has to go to the boards to dig it out. Benrath behind a back pass, Barnes behind the net, he tried to tuck it in, he scored. He did. Yep, he sure did. Stu Barnes from behind the net, and he beats that guy clean between the pads. Now that's one situation that a goaltender's got to work on and learn how to play. That's practice. Is, that is a goal you very rarely see scored in the National Hockey League. A player coming from behind the net and scoring. Cliff Ronning made his living doing that oh, in the Western my. Hockey League. And he's done how it. many times he's done it with the St. Louis Blues, though? Well, he has done it, but not nearly rougher. as often. But yep. uh, Eric uh, left the short post open a little bit too soon, and Barnes was able to step it in there. 48 of the period, scored by number 14, Stu Barnes. Assist to number 27, Greg Spinrath, and number 25, Troy Kennedy. 
Barnes from Spenrath and Kennedy on Tri-Cities power play goal at 7.48. Barnes has 36 on the year, and it is 2-1, Tri-Cities by one now. 11.58 to go in the first period, by a four the puck at center ice. Lost it. And LeBron moving in on Leahy, gets around him. Goes to the corner, Sean LeBrun with a puck behind the net, throws it out in front, traffic jam. Winterhawks able to clear it. And LeBrun chases it back in front of the Americans' bench. Rick White pass to Jakes, back to LeBrun, almost had his pocket pick, then does lose it to Dennis Holland. Holland was in by himself, now playing to Leahy, in front, Mick, and Rye, save Colsey. Hey, we got the goal dislodged behind Olaf Colsey. Troy Mick put in the net hard by one of the Americans. That was Sean LeBrun, and it could have been charging. LeBron came from a long distance to get to Mick. Mick was point blank, stone cold alone, right in front of the goaltender, Olaf Kolzig, and unfortunately, he got the puck stuck on his backhand. I think if he would have had it on his forehand, he could have probably got it in behind Kolzig. But as soon as he got the shot away, the uh, floodgates were poured upon him, and the Tri-City Americans blasted Troy into the net. Took Dennis Holland a long time to find Troy Mick. He actually threw it to Leahy first, and Leahy pitched it to Mick, and that's one of the very few times you'll see a situation where Dennis Holland does not know where Troy Mick is, or vice versa. Usually they have that sixth sense, and that time Mick was getting open in front, and Holland just didn't see it. Now the puck is on the boards, and it'll be shot into center ice to Troy Kennedy right at the red line. Kennedy for the Americans. Shot by Rennie as high as he took a drop pass, puck up the boards, and Leahy's got it. Lee to Holland, moving across the Tri-Cities line, drop it to Mick. Mick dances his way in, deeks out, Kolzig throws it in front, and it's stolen. Oh, unfortunate. They had Kolzig out to lunch, but they couldn't complete the pass in front. Kennedy the other way, deeks that got and scores. Oh, is that a big turn of events. Portland had an open net and couldn't complete the pass, and the Americans come down the other way, and Kennedy sends Babs gun into the third row of seats with a whale of a move and then flips it home and it is three to one tri-city ella was a two on two and i don't know who the other winger was for tri-city but kennedy used him as a screen and was able to pick off the other defenseman to get an open shot on eric Baskon. troy kennedy unassisted kennedy unassisted at 907. now that is a big big turn of events portland squanders a chance at one end and the americans come right back and capitalize at the other end and that's what you saw a lot of in camlips on friday night yes we did yes we did portland had a lot of chances and uh, for some odd reason couldn't get the puck in the net sometimes it was their own fault sometimes it was corey hirsch and then all of a sudden they had to go the other direction and they had to get buried well they just buried that one and tri-cities has a three to one lead at the 10 minute mark of the first period in spite of the fact that the puck has been in the tri-city zone most of the time if you have a time of possession clock as they do in football, it would be in favor of the winner hunt. But that doesn't matter because it's a scoreboard that counts. Race off to the right of Kolzig. Hamish now taking the center, centering effort. He's got Terry Black on one side and Fleetwood on the other with Middlestat and Mitchell. Terry Black, Hamish, and Fleetwood forward line. Middlestat turns and cranks one that's right into the defense from the faceoff, and Rick Fry has got the puck for Tri-Cities. Up to McNutt, shovel pass, Delcourt can't catch up, has to chase into the Portland zone, Mitchell hip checks him, and it's an offside call anyway. Timeout, 10-21 remaining first period, 3-1 to one Tri-Cities on a Pepsi Fred Meyer scoreboard back in 30. We love living here in the Pacific Northwest, and Carpenter Ants like to live here too. This is surely for guaranteed pest control. When it comes to Carpenter Ants, it's very important to call a qualified pest control company at the first sign of an infestation. We have been protecting homes against ants, spiders, roaches, and other insects in a safe, reliable manner since 1949. Call us at Guaranteed Pest Control, 646-2119. That's 646-2119. All right, from the face off, Delcourt's got the puck as Tri-Cities works from right to left. Throw it into the Portland zone. Off the boards, Rick Fry. Tangled on the boards by Jorgensen. Loose puck. Fry in traffic, loses to Midas. Midas lift the pass to Clouston, break out of center ice. Clouston long shot, handled by Colsey, kick to the corner. Clouston digs it out. We had Midas wide open in front, but couldn't get the pass around Devin Dirks and the Tri Cities Americans. Now they get in the corner, jockey for the puck. Delcourt's good. Flip it ahead to McNutt, and he clears it outside the line. Middlestead hammers it back in for Portland on a line change, and Dirksen's got a lot of time. 
Devin Dirksen of the Tri-Cities Americans. Slips and falls, gets back up again. Nobody on him, so he dumps it in from center ice. Bad's gone, cleared up the boards to Dennis Holland. Oh, giveaway, Holland to LeBron, a drive deflected wide. Barnes wheels and throws it in front, he missed spin rim. Now, Leahy is facially put to the ice by LeBron. We're gonna get a penalty in Sean LeBron. Hawks, delayed penalty again. Let's see if they can turn another trick. Here's Leahy, moving in, go to Mitt, on the delay, penalty, score! He did it again! And that is your KWJJ play of the game. Troy Mitt scoring on a delayed penalty to bring the Winterhawks within one. That is your KWJJ play of the game. Troy Mick's goal in the first period. And all you got to do is identify that tomorrow morning between 8 and 9 in the morning on Brian Norton's Morning Show on 99.5 FM or 1080 AM KWJJ. And you win a $100 prize package. Troy Mick on the goal. 10, Greg Leahy, number 11, Chad Biafor. Mick from Leahy and Biafor. Time of the goal, 10.57. And for the maker, that's his 29th goal of the year and the second goal on a delayed penalty call tonight. That's weird, isn't it? It sure is. You, you see very rarely see it happen. Yep. Most of the time, they can't even get the extra attacker on, but they have twice tonight. That time, it's played to their benefit. Last time, Batscon got to the net, or got to the bench, just as uh, the Winterhawks were able to score it anyway. All right, middle stab with a puck over to Mitchell in the corner. All right, Portland only down by one now. It is three to two, Tri-Cities. And the Hawks, it looks like they're going to get into another shootout tonight. Now we have what? We got a hand pass. Hand pass. Yep. Mitchell caught the puck and threw it ahead, and Hamish Black picked it up. It'll force a face-off just inside the Portland blue line, and it'll give opportunities to both coaches to change the lines again. Well, I got a phone call in the office today from a fan that says she's never been to a hockey game ever, listened to your broadcast over the weekend, and is now going to go to a hockey game. I that's like what, it. That's what we hope to do. We hope to, uh, you know, interest uh, new people into hockey, because it really is a good sport to come and watch. It's a lot of fun, and, uh, and one of the things she asked me about was a high stick infraction. So we want to explain that in just a moment as the Hawks break in. Shot, save, Colzig, and he covers the rebound as Lee, he was the trailer and had a great chance, but Polzik slammed the door at coverage. Okay. High stick infraction. It's a penalty uh, for high sticking if you use your high stick against another player, the opposite team, and that's a two minute or a five minute penalty. It could be a game misconduct. A high stick infraction simply means you bat the puck down with a stick above your shoulder. If you touch the puck with your stick too high, they call play dead and they give the face off uh, to the advantage point for the opposing team. That's all it is. It's not a penalty, it's an infraction. So we want to explain that, and uh, hopefully that young lady will uh, make it to a hockey game pretty soon. Holland in his own zone. Turning behind his own net. Gets away from Kennedy, wheeled up on the boards to Troy Mick. Mick to Leahy, kicked away by the linesman, as it turns out. And Tri-City's able to clear it back in the Winterhawk territory. 7.39 remaining in the first period. Three to two, Tri-City's by one. Outlet pass. Intended for Holland, we have a whistle and an offside against Tri-Cities. Timeout, 7.33 remaining first period, three to two Tri-Cities on a Pepsi Fred Meyer scoreboard back in 30. Your business is handicapped without a good fax machine. Automated Office Systems introduces the world's finest fax, the Canon Fax 705 with InstaScan. Scan documents in just four seconds to save time and money. The Canon Fax 705 stores up to 70 pages of information and transmits them when phone rates are lowest. Dual access virtually eliminates any waiting to send or receive documents. The future of fax is here today. The Canon Fax 705 from Automated Office Systems. Always a step ahead of the competition. All right, we're back. Puck is in the Portland corner. Mitchell. Crunched by two Americans. It comes free. Middle stats cut. Joey Middlestead skated out of the center ice, hit the red line, and pop it into Tri-Cities territory. Wheeled in behind the net by Colzig, the goaltender of the Americans. Mitchell keeping it alive on the right point. Mitchell, double team, puck outside the line, and Clouston at center ice for Portland. Clouston forced back into his own zone by Rick Fry of the Americans. Barnes steals an outlet pass, but his double team couldn't control, and Maiden gets it ahead to Clouston. Here come the Winterhawks, Clouston breaking in. Into the Tri-City zone, pass, and hit it for Maiden. Good defensive play by Delcourt on Scotty Maiden. 3-2 Tri-City, 6.38 remaining in the first period. 
Here's a pass stolen by Terry Black. One on one now, a two on one. Minot fills the lane. Black takes it in deep. Pass Fleetwood. No, big save. Jose. Holy torpedoes. Tremendous save by Olaf Jose. Puck clear back of the Portland zone, and Biafor is good. Biafor to Kevin Jorgensen. Loses to Barnes. Sharp Barnes moving into Portland zone. A shot they score. Sean LeBron. And that is twice Portland has turned the puck over to Stu Barnes. And both times it has ended up in the net. Cannot give the puck to Stu Barnes. Number one rule to beat Tri-Cities. And the Hawks have violated the rule twice in the first period. Tri-Cities goal at 13.48 of the period. Scored by number 18, Sean LeBron. Assist to number 14, Stu Barnes. LeBron from Barnes, time of the goal, 13.48. And for LeBron, that's his 25th goal of the year, so the big guns have been putting it in the net tonight for Tri-City. Barnes is in on three of the four goals for the Americans. He makes it happen. He splits off of the drive wide. So it's 4-2, to two. tri Cities, and the Winterhawks continue to give up a passel full of goals. Fleetwood at the point, a drive blocked out in front. Hamish was mugged in front of the net, no penalty. Oh, now, now we're going to get a high stick. Back. Hamish was steamed, and he just delivered an elbow or a high stick. Uh, well, it wasn't Hamish that got the stick up. It yeah. was Terry Black. Is it was right? inadvertent. As they, he, Black was uh, battling for the puck along the far board. See, Black can't even believe it. That's what they're calling. Now, Hamish yeah, hit him are. clean, I guess, because Hamish crutched him, too. Yeah, he did. Uh, well, here's the announcement. Terry Black, two minutes for high sticking. Terry Black for high sticking. Time of the penalty, 14-17. Now that is a high-sticking penalty. There so you go. You go to the box for two minutes. All right. Yeah, really, the easy way to remember it is that you're not supposed to have your stick up over your shoulders. And if you do and get the puck, it's an infraction, then there's a face-off. And if you do and you get a player, then it's a penalty. 5.43 remaining first period. And Five cities now leading 4-2, to two, and they get a power flow. So here we go. Early crossroads of this hockey game. Portland already down by two. Can ill afford to go down more, although they have rallied so many times, it's tough to say that they can't. But the problem is the Hawks have been playing with fire so much, you can only play with fire so long before it burns you. That's true. LeBron to Jakes. At the red line, dumps it in. The Portland territory off the boards. Leahy drags Benrath down. Could have been an interference call that didn't happen, and the Hawks clear it to center ice. Jakes with the red line. As they set up the Tri-Cities power play, which has already scored one tonight. LeBron in on Leahy. Go to the corner. Picked up on the play defensively by Mitchell, but bounces off his check. And Barnes has it. Barnes trying to make a move. Cut off by Leahy. Pass point Kennedy. Whip it around to LeBron. Bob Barnes on the outside. Hawks keeping it outside. Good job so far. Spin round. Barnes off his stick. Who's got it? Barnes gets it back. Pass to the point outside the line. So... Tri-Cities have to start over again. 4.49 remaining in the first period, 4-2. to two. Tri-Cities, 103 to go on an American power play. Jakes, back at his own blue line. Jakes ahead to Barnes. Wheeling and dealing, cuts in on Clouston, drives, stops, knocked to the ice, and the Hawks able to stop it. Good play by Mitchell, although Barnes kind of lost his skates on that drive. Now Kennedy can't come up with a pass. Mitchell bats it ahead, and Barnes takes over again. Here he comes, Stu Barnes. Checked by Mitchell, gets the puck back and shot it wide. Huh. Got a puck on the boards, and it is Maiden for Portland. Up to Clouston. 29 seconds to go on of Tri-Cities power play. Maiden tried to break into Tri-Cities territory, and Barnes steals. Barnes breaks the center. Barnes into the Portland zone. Cuts, waits, looks, pass. They get Jakes cutting in the slot. A drive, crossbar. Oh, crossbar by Jakes. Barnes is unbelievable. He has got great vision on the ice. Here's a wrist shot wide by Jakes. And Biafor's got it. Biafor is taken into the boards by LeBron and Barnes. Biafor's trying to get a face off, but they got the puck out. Barnes has it. Barnes pass, knocked away, and then covered by Bats guy. Good job by Flintoff out in front. And the penalty is now over. We will have a face off in the Portland zone to the left side of Portland goaltender Eric Badsgun. With the score, Tri Cities 4, Portland 2. Let's break quickly for station identification. This is Winterhawk Hockey. You're a part of Winterhawk Country on KWJJ AM, Portland. Dean Broman and Ron Ross sending it your way tonight. 
First intermission, we're going to talk about important stuff, everybody. We're going to talk about your hockey ticket costing more money. Maybe. Important stuff. Listen, first intermission. We're going to talk about hockey in Eugene. We're going to talk about the building in Kamloops if we have a chance. We've got an update on that that Ron's going to pass your way. Of course, he was up in Kamloops over the weekend bringing you the game on Friday night. And quite an unbelievable story. I hope we have a chance to get to that tonight. But we've really got to cover the, the whole issue of the user fee that uh, is considered right now a possibility to go into effect as far as your tickets are concerned. So we want to get into that first intermission. Fleetwood with a puck. Moving in on the right side. Hawks trying to set it up. Get it to Terry Black. Pass Hamish behind him. Uh -huh. Kennedy back the other way. Both teams at full strength. Kennedy on to Shurstenka down the slot. Nice drop pass to Duval. Winner Hawks break it up. At the line, Mitchell. Terry Black, I should say. Shoot it ahead on goal. Colzig will stop it and flip it into center off of middle stat. Duval's got it in the neutral zone for Tri-City. Duval waiting for some teammates. Rennie was offside. Winterhawks break it up anyway. Here comes Holland. One on everybody. Holland, one on the entire team. Takes it all the way in and draws a penalty. Oh, what a great effort by Dennis Holland. Timeout, 2.48 to go. First period score. Tri-City's for Portland 2. Back in 30. It's Papa Aldo's best buy of the year and their most popular special, the large pepperoni pizza. Large, the big one. Now just $6.99 at all Papa Aldo's. Heaps of pepperoni, cheese, Papa's secret sauce, Portland's finest pizza, and always fresh ingredients. Large pepperoni now at Papa Aldo's, only $6.99. Cross for hooking, 17-12. What an outstanding effort by Dennis Holland. Winterhawks get a power play their second of the game. Crystal Powell of Vancouver for $200 tonight. Scott Maiden, the Skipper's Money Man. Get into Skipper's and sign up and play, everybody. Lots of money to be had. Here's Mick. It front score! Greg Leahy! Well, that one didn't take long. So the Hawks are within one again. It is four to three and another defensive struggle. Seven goals only here in the first period. You guys should be able to do better than that. Goal, goal at 1720 in the period, scored by number 10, Greg Leahy. And his 14th goal of the year. Assistant number 22, Troy Mick, and number 12, Haney Slack. Leahy from Mick and Haney Slack on the power play goal at 1720. So it is now 4-3, Tri-Cities by one. Here's the Hawks, Dennis Holland working on Jake's. Got the puck free, but Jake's able to take over. Captain of the Americans, swing it to Spen Rath. Now on to Stu Barnes. Oh, nice behind the back pass intended for LeBron, but Middlestack got a stick in it. Joey Middlestack with a puck. Got it up into center ice to Troy Mick, and he shoots it on into the Tri-City zone. Colsey out of the net. What do we have here? Interference, Interference call. Wait a minute, fans That's, are cheering, but yeah. I'm not sure if this is going to go against Portland. It can go both ways. I'm not so sure. It's Greg, Greg, it looks like it's going to go against Tri-City. Greg Spinrath headed to the California Cooler. Timeout, 2.14 to go, first period. Tri-City's 4, Portland 3 on a Pepsi. Fred Myers scoreboard back at 30. When you buy Reich and STX 6065 Series radials, you're getting an ultra-high-performance tire that's backed by a 40,000-mile treadwear limited warranty. Specially designed for today's high-tech autos, and priced from just $59.95 each at the tire factory. Get the ultra-high performance radials guaranteed for 40,000 miles. Like an STX 6065 performance radials. Warranty applies under normal driving conditions and on a prorated basis. And be sure to see the Tire Factory, Art Stearns Tire Factory in Portland, and Nelson Tire Factory in Hood River. Puck back in the Portland zone, Hamish chasing it down. It is a Portland power play, they're third of the game, they're two for three so far. No, one for two, I'm sorry. Now we're trying to go two for three right now. By a four center ice, two line pass. Yes, they're gonna yeah. call it. Two line pass to Terry Black, so the draw will come back inside the Portland blue line. That's just a bad mental mistake by Chad Biafor. He had a winger, uh, Hamish Black, open before the red line and simply sent it further up ice. And you can't pass the puck across two lines. Clouston takes a face off. Let's see how he does. He won another one. Going to try to 
chart flew some space rocks because he loses so few. It's just amazing. By a fourth. Moving out of his own zone, winging on to Hamish at center. And Hamish will cut. He'll be the point of the power play on it. Scotty Minan, he wiggles his way in. Minan, pass. Intended for Terry Black. Hopped his stick. Hamish turns. Crank it from the boards. That one blocked and intercepted in front by LeBron. Hamish, keep it alive at the blue line. Throw it in the slot. Loose puck. Who's got it? Hamish charges in. Kicks at it. Can't get full control, then does, and shoots it wide. On the boards, Terry Black for the Portland Winterhawks. Double team. Get it back to the point. By a four shot. Deflected. Save. Pulls it. Got close to it. How does he make that? Clouston with a great tip. Here's a pass. Oh, and Minan was stuffed from behind. No call. Holy torpedoes. Minan was absolutely annihilated from behind in front of the net before the shot, before he touched the puck, and there was no call. Now Mitchell in front of the Tri-Cities pitch. Mitchell to Lee. And across the land, gets away from Jakes, but LeBron in to cut off the puck. Now it comes near the goal. Bad clearing pass. Hawk steal, but Holland. Had it taken away by Barnes. On to LeBron. Barnes and LeBron in short-handed. Moore takes LeBron out. And a puck swatted ahead by Portland goaltender Eric Batska. And the Winterhawks move out. Here's Lee on the Hamish. Down to Mick on the right side. Mick pull up on the boards. Pass intended for Moore is out of his reach. Moore keeps it alive, though. Hawks still have the puck. Moore. Holland in front. Mick. No, he doesn't get good wood on it. And Jakes will shoot it away with 10 seconds to go in a period out of the penalty box. Spin round. Babscott has to go to the corner to play the puck. Puts it up the boards. Mick has got it at center ice. Good play by Eric Babscott. Mick dumps it in, and that'll end the period. Boy, what could have been a dreadful period ends pretty close. End of one, Tri-Cities four, Portland three. Action continues in just a moment. He scores! See, sir, where'd you get it? Where's mine? Get your own official NBA Blazer t-shirt by playing the Oregon Lottery's new instant scratch game, Blazing Basketball, and win up to $500 instantly. Over $4 million in total prizes. Blazing Basketball. It's a great play. Odds are better than one in five. And much that a dollar can buy. Here are tonight's winning numbers, 6, 11, 13, 16, 26, and 33. And here's another winning number from Memorial Coliseum. John Clouston has just scored his second goal of the game, and the Winterhawks have tied it up. Clouston getting a rebound off the goaltender stick of Olaf Polzig of the Tri-Cities Americans and roping it home. Portland has tied it up. Seven seconds in the second period. By number 27, Debson John Houston. Assist to number six, Roy Mitchell, and number eight, Scott Myden. Houston from Mitchell and Myden. Time of the goal, 27 seconds. So just like that, it is a four to four hockey game. And the Winterhawks start out with more fireworks. Holland with a puck at center. He's driving into Tri-Cities territory off the edge of the stick. Of sure stick is still has a puck, loses it to Lee. He and a shot went just wide. Lee, he took it off Shersteka, and in one motion, wheeled, and just missed with a backhand. Here comes Price, and he's the other way. Bats got stand-up save on one of the Americans, breaking it off the left wing. That was Spenrath. On center ice, Troy Mick for Portland. Pass broken up by Sean LeBron. Loose puck in the Tri-City zone. Lee, he got it back for a moment, and then fired it in front of the net, where Jakes takes over for the Americans, moving left to right. Jakes, Barnes, tied up by Flintoff. Barnes goes in behind the net, steals it from Flintoff, looking in front. Barnes, shot blocked by Lee, he. Lee, spin a pass, center ice to Mick. On his horse, moving in, got Jakes turned around, but can't get the shot away. Now goes to the circle and does shoot. Kolzig the save. Mick with a puck, goal line to the right side. Troy Mick, grabbed and thrown to the ice. Was Dennis Holland, no call. That was away from the puck. And we're going to get a two-line pass against the Americans, I think. Yes, we are, and the faceoff will come back inside the Tri-City zone. Well, the Hawks are able to not to score at four, but they simply cannot afford to get into these shootouts and continue to survive, Duke. Well, the shootout looks a little better when you rally from 4-2 down to tie it. Now they got to tighten the screws. I'll tell you, Portland out shoots Tri-Cities 16-10 in the first period. Now, oftentimes last year, the Hawks were just hopelessly getting outshot in games. That's not happening this year. The Hawks are making isolated 
horrendous defensive blunders, I guess you would call them, that are costing them goals because the first goal by Tri-Cities was a two-on-nobody for him at six. That's what you can't have happen. Now at center ice, here's Terry Black moving in for Portland. Put it in behind the net. And with it is Kolzig teed up behind the goal to Kraus. Winterhawks, good for checking pressure. Get a loose puck to the point. Mitchell holds it in. Mitchell, wrist shot toward the net is deflected wide. And Fleetwood has it behind the net. Fleetwood trying to center was knocked away by Hamish. And the loose puck comes to the Americans. Rob Kraus can't get it past Terry Black. Good job of holding it in, but then the Americans do clear. Mitchell gets it back and he took it away from Frank Malone. To Fleetwood, to Mighty. Nice play, big save, Kolzig. Oh, baby. Superb play by Fleetwood to get it on Maiden stick. Point blank range icing Tri-Cities. Wow, what a save by Olaf Kolzig. Scotty Maiden and Devin Dirksen <laughs> get nose to nose. And when the linesmen get in, then Dirksen gets aggressive. Correction. Nose to belly button. Well, Dirk might case. Actually, Dirksen <laughs> is not exactly a great nope. size guy either, but Scotty might is be only 5'6. Nose to 10. Yeah. Scotty Minden will go against anybody. He doesn't care if they're 6'4 or 5'4. If they steam him, they're going to pay. And that's Minden going to the penalty box now with Dirksen. Period for Tri City, number 9, Kevin Dirksen. For Portland, number 8, Scott Minden goes to the fourth delay of game. Dirksen and Minden for delay of game. Time in the penalty, 2. All right. 224 the time of the penalties. Puck is in the Portland zone now. Behind his own net is who? Thudium. Close to bounce pass opposite side to buy a four. Winterhawks moving out through four checking pressure. Going to be icing though. Thudium could not get the pass at center, but then forced Kolzig to play the puck. So icing waved off. When the goaltender plays the puck, they wave icing off. Here come the Americans across the line. Winterhawks stack it up. Good play. Here's Thudium. The center ice for Portland, cut of the Tri-City zone. Now drop it to Gorley. Slack shot blocked out in front. This is by a four. To Thudium, Clouston looking for Gorley in front. The pass, the shot. He didn't get good one on it. Loose puck. By a four's got a chance. Shot, glove save, Colson. He was sitting down and still was able to make the save. We're going to get a Tri-City's penalty. Cross-checking. I honestly think by a four just got a little bit underneath it and roped it up and over the bar because they heard the glass pound. But we're going to get a penalty to Murray Duval. Timeout, 16.43 to go. Second period, it's a 4-4 tie and a Pepsi Fred Meyer scoreboard back at 30. Trans Hillbilly Bread is the bread your active family will really go for. It's high in protein and loaded with important vitamins and minerals. It's a great source of nutrition for the family on the go. Hillbilly Bread combines the smooth, light texture of white bread with the whole grain goodness of wheat for a taste that's as delicious as it is nutritious. Look for Franz Hillbilly Bread at your favorite store. Franz, the good bread. Our Skipper's Power Play contestant, Mike Thompson, again of Vancouver. Second player from Vancouver tonight, Chad Biafor is the money man. For $200 if Chad scores the power play goal. Right now he's not out there. He's Holland to Leahy. Shot went wide. Leahy digs it out. He scored Portland's power play goal in the first period. Greg Leahy. Pass in front. Hops the stick of Mick. Mitchell has the right point. Hawks have a chance to go in the lead for the first time in the game. However, in the corner, Conowitz... Got the puck, loses to Mitchell at the point, slap shot right on save, Kolzik, and Leahy was in front to try to get the deflection, but the puck was played away from him. In the corner, Jake's turning around with Mick on it. Mick able to pry the puck away from Jake's. Mick looking for somebody, nobody there, goes to the point to Fleetwood, make a shot, go to Mick in the faceoff circle, cross ice pass to Mitchell, wrist shot, Holland looking for the deflection, couldn't quite get a stick on it, and Americans don't get it out. Mitchell holding it in for Portland. Winterhawks on the attack. Fleetwood a drive. Save. Colzig rebound. And Leahy couldn't get a stick on it in front. Fleetwood crossover pass to Hamish. First shot went wide. Leahy goal line to the left side. Here's Greg Leahy. Pass. Slot. Mitchell. Wrist shot right on. Save. Olaf Colzig. And he covers. Excellent passing by the Hawks. They were getting some pretty good shots. Colzig was uh, up to the task, and he is really a tired goalie right now. So are the penalty killers of the Tri-City Americans were down to 38 seconds on the man advantage, and uh, that whole unit was out there for all of that time. 
Winterhawks are showing some really nice puck movement tonight, Ron. They're whipping it around with intelligence most of the time and doing it in a fancy way and getting a lot of great chances. Well, the way to defeat the box is not to roll the puck around the outside of the box. It's to be able to find somebody and cut through it, sometimes twice. But if you can cut through the box, you cut it in half and generally can find somebody open. And of late, the Hawks have really been playing a little pity pat on the power play uh, with the, the forward in the face-off circle. There's a loose puck in front, and Black just couldn't quite get there in time. By a fourth shot was stopped, and Hamish had a chance but couldn't quite get there in time as Barnes was able to shoot it away. Oh, no! Hawks turned it over. Barnes shot it wide. Oh, my! How many times are they going to give it to Barnes? Pick somebody else to give it to, please. This, this is what we saw the other night in Victoria, that when there was a loose puck, it went right to Clayton Young. All right, puck is loose at the Tri-Cities line. They clear it to center way, and Black has got it at center ice. Dumps it back in for Portland. Game tied 4-4, 4, to 4 44 remaining in the second period. Stu Barnes on the ice. He does it all. He's been in on three of the four goals for Tri-Cities tonight, and the Winterhawks are trying to give him some more. Now, Moore is in behind the net. Bashed by Delcourt as Tri-Cities is at full strength again. Winterhawk power play fails at that juncture. Moore with a puck in the corner. Move it up. Clouston loses to Jake's shot. That's gone barely covered that one. Oh, the gaping gates went wide and the puck almost went in there. Yeah, he tried to stick it out to his right and kind of stubbed it off the heel of his stick and left it right there in the slot, right in the crease. Fortunately, he was able to cover the puck. Notice something that Tri-Cities is doing, and it is really causing the defensive units for the Winterhawks to fit. When they bring the puck up ice two on two, they're doing a little X or a weave just as soon as they get over the blue line, and it is really tying up the Portland defensemen. They're going to have to communicate a lot better. It's just like running a pick in basketball uh, or an X route in football. All you're trying to do is to get the uh, defensive players to uh, either two players wind up on the wrong guy or to bump into each other or something. And if you do it legally and you do it properly, uh, you're not doing it with illegal interference or anything, it becomes a very difficult play to pick up. Fortunately, they're doing it just about every time up the ice, so the Hawks should be able to make the adjustment. Both teams at full strength, game tied 4-4, four four, Tri-Cities breaks into Portland territory, good bump by Gorley on Reddy, and the Hawks have a puck, Biden, center ice, working his way in on Murray Duval, Biden's got Fleetwood with him, Biden pulls it, drops into the point, Chris shot is wide. Good transition by Tri-Cities to break up that potential rush by Portland. And the Americans threw it, shoot it through center ice, Mitchell back in his own zone, one hands a pass to Biden who's knocked off the puck, and here's Jakes. For the Americans in his own blue line. Jakes to Kennedy. Oh, wow. Was he hip-checked by Middlestad and put on his can. Joey Middlestad. Resounding check at center ice. Got his Kraus. Put a puck to Jakes in his own zone. Pass center ice. Kennedy wrapped up by Flintoff. And Mitchell's got it in his own zone. Mitchell bouncing up the boards into Tri-Cities territory. It is shot back through to Portland's. Ice, and Mitchell's got it. Mitchell to Flintoff in his own slot. Wrist pass through Leahy. Kicked into Tri-Cities territory. Icing waved off. Kraus hauling on him. Holland bumps Kraus. Puck around the boards. And the Hawks will stack it up. Try to get a face-off in the Tri-City zone, and they do. We want to mention again, Gray Eyes and Andrzejkowski both out with a flu tonight. That is why they are not playing, and they're not on the bench. We have some questions about that. Also want to tell you this one. Winterhawk fans, attention. Sunday night, when Victoria's here, it's the first of two straight Sunday games. Six o'clock face-off. Victoria will be here this Sunday night, January 29th, and then Kamloops the following Sunday night. All you have to do is attend both of those games, and you will get a complete full set of Winterhawk trading cards. And if you are a card collector, even if you're not, you're going to want to get these. Full color pictures, all the information of each player on the back of every card. They are really done nicely by our friends at Pepsi and Fred Meyer. It's going to be a great time. All you have to do is be at the game Sunday night and the following Sunday. You get a free set of cards. You have to be at both games, though, to get the whole set. So make sure that you're here. Loose puck in front will be covered by Olaf Kolzik for a face-up. So we do want to remind everybody of that, Ron. They've got to be here at both games to get a full set of cards. It's the only way that you can do it because there is a limited supply. But everybody that's at the game gets a free set. Should be great. They are just as nice as the ones two years ago, and yeah. I thought those were really, really nice. Full color, nice yep. information on the back. 
Everything you always wanted to know about the Winterhawks that we're afraid to ask is on the back of those cards, I can tell you. And great pictures on the front. So make sure you're here Sunday night, everybody, to get those cards. Here's Fry moving in for Tri-Cities. A shot went wide, and again, the Winterhawks get caught napping up the ice. Mitchell on the boards. Work it out to Hamish. Good play to control the puck. Hamish to center ice, cutting into the slot. He got Terry Black going the wrong way. Zig when he should have zagged, but Black still gets the puck. Two Black, Hamish, early score! Portland, great play! for head coach Ken Hodge, right, Ron? Yep. Hamish Black, Brian Gorley, and I didn't see who the other winger was Terry out there. Terry Black. Terry Black went out there together. And, and they're uh, all in on the goal. 7.55 in the period by number 17, Brian Gorley! For Mr. Gorley, that's his fifth of the year. Sister number 12, Hamish Black, and number 9, Terry Black. Gorley from Hamish and Terry Black. Time of the goal, 7.55. Five to four, Winterhawks. 11.53 remaining to be played. Second period. They have rallied from 4-2 down. Portland now up by one. Now the Hawks have got to remember that there are two ends of this ice to play on. Offense and defense. And let's see if they can shut down the Americans now. Thudium shoot, shoots it in the Tri-City zone. Here the Americans can't get it out. Portland's forechecking has been dynamic. Biafor took it away, shoved it in the corner, and Spinrath can't get down again. Biafor, good job of holding it at the point. Shot blocked out in front. Clouston tried to center in front, and it is Maiden that was put down before he could get the shot away. Yeah, Maiden won a penalty. They're Maiden was, get it. was held, and there should have been a penalty, but there wasn't. Bad's guy at the other end of the ice. Portland's goaltender gave it to Spinrath, who shot it wide. Oh, 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 oh. He's got four guys back there. How does he give it to the only price oh. of the American that was there? I'll tell you, it's amazing that Ken Hodge has any pair left. Amazing. All right, Trusteke, or rather Kronowitz, behind his own net. Winterhawks have rallied from 5-4 down, or 4-2 down to lead 5-4. Let's see if they can stop from giving it back. Here's Barnes coming in. Shot blocked by Middlestead. Parker's in the corner. LeBron. Tomahawks it in behind a Portland net, and Biafor is there with Barnes on him. Spin across, pass across the ice to Middlestead. Middlestead back to Biafor, stolen away by Barnes. Barnes in front to Duval, fanned on it. Hawks got a break there. Who's Mick the other way? Mick to center ice, got Leahy with him, looked like offside, not called, Holland the trailer, pass off the back of his skate. Boy, you won't see that very often. Troy Mick putting a pass off the back of Holland's skate. Here's Barnes the other way, a drive, stopped by Vanska. In behind the net, chucking from behind, you betcha, Murray Duval, you are on your way to the sin bin. Timeout. 10-18, we're ending in a second period. Score, Portland 5, Tri-Cities 4, and a Pepsi Fred Meyer scoreboard will be back in 30. Make it easy on yourself this year and let Columbia Bookkeeping do your taxes for you. Columbia Bookkeeping has been providing fast, dependable, accurate tax service for over 24 years. You get an in-depth, private interview by a professional tax preparer, licensed by the Board of Tax Service Examiners. Columbia Bookkeeping provides free audit assistance, they pay the penalty for arithmetic mistakes, and they're open year-round for tax planning. Full service, that's Columbia Bookkeeping. Locally owned and operated with lots of convenient locations, look in the yellow pages under tax. Another crucial juncture to this hockey game. It is now 5-4 to four Portland, and the Winterhawks get a power play. Remember earlier, Tri-Cities had a chance to bury the Hawks on their power play, did not do it. Let's see if the Winterhawks can put a little nail in the coffin here. Hamish down the slot, ridden out by Kennedy. Puck into the Tri-Cities corner, and Hamish tried to dig it out for Portland along with Gorley. Gorley gets the puck loose, pass. Oh, a nice try, but a good defensive play by Steve Rennie. Shoots the puck down the ice, and the Winterhawks will have to start over again. Fleetwood behind his own net down on my right. Fleetwood along with Mitchell at the points. And they got Hamish, Terry Black, and Gorley up front. Right? All right, here's Mitchell. On to Terry Black. Pull up in the face-off circle, looking for Hamish in front, and the tip went wide. Now Gorley holds it in with the assistance of Mitchell, but it goes on to the stick of Chanowitz. Doesn't get it out. Yes, he does. Mitchell tried to keep it in, but could not quite walk that blue line tightrope. It's offside point. Century Pharmacy is the place to come for information about your medical needs. The pharmacists are always available to talk to you at Century Pharmacy, your Washington County value right pharmacy. Well, good luck to Mike Thompson of Vancouver, Washington, our Skipper's Power Play contestant here in the second period. We have $200 in the jackpot. Chad Biafor 
is our money man. And he's on the ice right now. Chad Biafor scored the overtime winner in the last game played here at the Coliseum against Seattle last Wednesday night. Biafor with a puck. Moving in across the line with Leahy. Spinning around. Delcourt with a pass to Mick and a face off on the right side. Crossover pass to Flintoff. Now to Biafor. Wrist shot. Deep slot. Goal! It's tip! It's tip! But Portland scores! Chad Biafor will get an assist. Unfortunately, that's not enough to win the power play jackpot, but it is enough to put the Winterhawks up 6-4 to four on the scoreboard. Time of the goal is 10.49. And it's Biafor and Flintoff on the assist. 10.49 in the period, and a power play goal by number 15, Dennis is 58th of the season. Assist to number seven, Rob Flintoff, and number 11, Chad Biafor. Holland from Flintoff and Biafor on Portland power play goal at 10.49. Hawks of the puck again in Tri-Cities territory. Winterhawks have really exploded here. Four consecutive goals to lead six to four. Here comes Leahy with another chance drive in on net. Polzik sliding save. Well, I don't know whether Leahy ever really got the shot away. He tried to deke him down, and once he did, he had no room to shoot. Now Delcourt coming the other way on by a four. Nice job, Chad. Cut him off, pass into the slot, broken up by Holland. All right, that's the defense we want to see. Lee ahead to Mick at center ice. Going on our right side. Lee, Mick, in on Kraus. One hands a pass that's knocked away by Colzig in front. Jake's in the corner, loses it to Clouston. And then the Americans get it back again and shoot it away. Boy, the Winterhawks are just ferociously forechecking tonight. Mitchell behind his own net, then on my right. Mitchell, long pass on the right wing to Midas. Hawks look extremely effective now. They look like the team we saw in October and November, but we've only seen flashes of it since, and Maiden is blown down. What do they say here? He's going to have an offside call against the Winterhawks. Timeout, eight minutes to go, second period, 6-4. Your Winterhawks are now in front. We'll be back in 30. Hi, Bob Lamp here for Beaverton Honda. We offer a superior automobile at a fair and competitive price. But most important, we know you like the way you're treated when you are here. No hard sell, no hype and no gimmicks. Check our ads in each Saturday's Oregonian and you'll see what I mean. Oregon's largest Honda car selection, including the Cord Civics and the Sporty Preludes, competitively priced with a deal that's up front. Remember, you've got my name on it. And fans, if you buy a Honda or a Hyundai from Bob Lanfear at the Auto Show this week, you get a free Winterhawk season ticket for the rest of the season Ooh. with your purchase. That's real nice. Isn't that a nice deal? Yeah. That's from Bob Lanfear's Beaverton Honda or Beaverton Hyundai. Buy your car from the auto show, and you get a free Winterhawk season ticket for the rest of the season. And Maiden is just hammered by Conowitz, and they're, and they're going to be... call a penalty to Maiden because yes, they Barnes are. is hurt. Yes, they are. Is that a weird one? Now, here's what happens. Conowitz completely flattened Scotty Maiden, and yeah. as Maiden went over, I think he hurt Barnes, yeah. right? No, yeah, you're right. Conowitz and Barnes both took Maiden down. It was a clean legal hit. You can knock the guy down that's got the puck as long as you don't cross-check him, and neither one did. And as Maiden was down on his back, he got his stick up uh, and bopped uh, Barnes right up underneath the visor. I don't know whether it was intentional or inadvertent, but uh, that's how it happened. And it's going to be two minutes against Maiden. A five, five minutes. Oh, boy. Oh, no. I don't believe that because he went over because the American knocked him over. Well, if he doesn't go over, his stick probably doesn't come up. No. You don't think so? No, that's no, the way no. I saw it. No, I don't think the stick was, was part and parcel of getting knocked to the ice. He was already down when his stick came back up again. Okay. I don't, I'll be honest I'd with like you. I'd like to see a replay. That's I don't have a whole lot of complaint with that What call. do we got, five for high sticking? Five is for slashing is what they called it. Yeah. And uh, time of the penalty is 12.22. Before I agree with you, I'd have to see it again. Unfortunately, well, I would Tom too. Hansen doesn't have the, he doesn't have no, the luxury of seeing it twice. He doesn't. He makes the call, and the Winterhawks will skate five minutes a man short. And, you know, here we are. We're sitting about six feet apart. We're both looking at the same play. And, and we get one way, and I see it another. Exactly right. I, I do have Phil Beard of Channel 2 on my side, however, that it was a good call. Is that right? He's nodding his head, and he gets to look at it more than once. So I guess we gotta, we got to say that. Let's right. take a vote. 
Let's what? make let's make hockey a more democratic sport. Let's uh, let the home fans vote on all Portland penalties. With the puck, Jake moving it over to LeBron. LeBron wrist shot blocked. Sent in behind the net. Murray Duval's got it. Squish to the boards by Flintoff. And a hawk shoot it away. All right. Penalty killers will have to get it done. Here's Holland out of center ice trying to do something short and drop past the lead. He broke it up. Portland continues to keep Tri Cities back pedaling, even when they're on a power play. Portland has dominated this hockey game thoroughly since the 10 minute mark of the first period. Now the Hawks break it up again, set it behind the net. Jakes will start back on the power play. Anytime Barnes is on the ice, you've got to be careful, though. I would assume he's out there somewhere. Well, maybe not, because he came to the bench. He's being tended to by the training staff. Yeah, he, is. he was the victim of the high stick. Black, center ice to Terry Black. Hawks continue to make the aggressive plays, even though they're down a man. The puck is cleared in front of the Tri-Cities net as Jakes is sent spinning. Back comes LeBron, working left to right. So far, no shots on goal. We played over a minute of the shorthanded situation. LeBron in the corner. LeBron, Tri-Cities, trailing 6-4 to four on a five-minute power play. LeBron and Jakes play catch. Good defense by Portland. Middlestad steals the puck, shoots it away. Look at this hockey team. Where has this team been since November? We've seen flashes of it, but this is total dominant hockey at both ends of the ice right now. Middlestad cleared our out of boards. Kennedy tied up by Thudium. Thudium forces the play on Jakes. Winterhawks get another turnover, and Mitchell's got the puck. Mitchell says, come and get me, and when they do, he shoots it the length of the ice. Boy, Mitchell. Now the Hawks have killed off almost two minutes of it. Six to four, Winterhawks by two. And right now, they are playing awesome hockey. Both ends of the ice. Kennedy to red line. Kennedy to blue line. Sashay in, loses the puck. Hawks dump it away again. Pustin, break away. He's in alone. No, he shot it wide, I think. Crossbar? I think he hit, it, hit something. All right. Might have been the blocker of Olaf Kolzik. Boy, would that have been a backbreaker for Tri-Cities if Pluston could have ripped that home. Mitchell at center ice. Dumps it right back into Tri-Cities territory. Tremendous penalty killing right now by Portland. And the outlet pass is tipped away into Winterhawk territory. Badsgan will leave it behind the net for Flintoff. Flintoff moves it off the glass into center ice, and Shurstenka has it there. Shurstenka over to Konowitz. Cross ice pass to Malone, and Tri-Cities can't even break into Portland territory. Now they do, they just have to dump it in. Mitchell behind his own net. Run hard by Kennedy, but a winner hot clear it anyway. So far, Tri-Cities has no shots on goal You're in right. almost three minutes of power play. Keeping track. Isn't that amazing? Winterhawks have played stellar here. Portland up six to four. They trail at one time, four to two. Puck in a quarter down. The Americans try to set it up. Malone. Behind the net, Barnes forced outside by Biafor. No shot. Barnes hassled by James Bla or Terry Black. Can't shoot now. Does shoot. Save that gun. That gun rebound. Save on Frank Malone. That was a tough chance, the second one. Tough, tough chance. Good opportunity by Stu Barnes. He skated in from the far faceoff circle into the slot, and the Winterhawks kind of let him go. But Bazgun was able to make the save and then cover up on the rebound. So they uh, took them over three minutes to get their first shot on goal, but their first one and plus the rebound adds up to two now. We're both pretty good shots. Now we have a very small crowd on hand tonight, everybody. We hope you're all saving up for the weekend. We have the Prince Albert Raiders here on Friday night. Unfortunately, they will be without Mike Modano. We'll tell you more about that. And then on Sunday night, Victoria here, 6 o'clock Sunday night, everybody. Make your plans to be with the Winterhawks this weekend. It should be some tremendous hockey. Two very good teams coming in this weekend. All right, Barnes loses the puck to Clouston. Winterhawks have killed off all but a minute 30 of this power play. Uh -oh. Clouston gave it to Barnes, but then got it back again. Whistle, wait a minute. Flint off, slashing. Good call by Tom Hansen. He was right there. He was right there to see it. And by the time Flintoff gave him the whack, Clouston had already stolen the puck back. But I don't know if Robbie knew that or not. Timeout, 4.03 to go, second period, 6-4 Portland on the Pepsi Fred Meyer scoreboard back in 30. One of your favorite dinners is featured at a special price this month at Lions. Succulent beef kebabs. They're truly delicious. And the complete dinner is just $6.45. Or if you prefer chicken, try Lions Delicious Chicken Monterey. Tender, boneless chicken breast, grilled and topped with creamy sherry mushroom sauce. Complete dinner is only $5.95. Outstanding dinners from Lions Restaurants, Portland, Beaverton, Corvallis, Eugene. Lions Restaurants, open 24 hours.
You're a part of Winter Hot Country on KWJJ AM Portland. Slap shot by LeBron is stopped by Bad's guy. The loose puck comes around the horn. Now it's a two-man advantage for Tri-Cities. Down six to four. Jake's pass stolen by Maya for it. Burke, get it out of there, Chad. And he does. All the way down the ice. Olaf Kolzik spots the puck to the Tri-Cities blue line, and Barnes is at the other end. Here's Barnes with the puck. Around Holland at center ice. Barnes in on Mitchell. Drop pass. Spin wrap. They go to the point around the horn to Jake's. Spinning and pivoting on Holland. Holland forces him out. Now Jake's penetrate the face-off circle. Drop it over to LeBron. Long shot. Bad's got saved. Leave out a rebound and they cover it. Uh-uh. Bad's got his team at Duval because Duval was right on top of him. You know, and by a forehead, spin wrap. All wrapped up. You know, Scooter, I haven't seen Kevin Jorgensen out defensively here much this period. And I'm wondering uh, whether he's kind of odd man out for a little bit. How about not around? No, he's on the bed. Is he on the bed? Yeah, both he and Moore are on oh, the I bed. I see him, yep. But it's Ben Mitchell and Middlestad, Biafor and, and uh, Flintoff. Well, we'll try to check on that as well. And Tchaikovsky and Gray Eyes not in uniform tonight. They probably got the same thing I had. And if it takes as long to get rid of it as it's taken me, I can't imagine trying to skate with what I had this weekend because you can't breathe. <laughs> to be able to skate to breathe to skate i think even though i don't skate i would assume it's a requirement duval moving in jake shot block go to the corner it is Fenrath. goal line on the right side still a two-man advantage winter hawks leading by two but tri-cities two-man advantage on the ice right now barnes lebrun deep slot wait look go to jake's line shoot right on save bats gone loose puck in the corner and the duval dig it out go to jake's good play by cluston wrap jake's up try to drag in the ice for a face off does John Cluston does so much to win hockey games. Incredible. And Incredible to me that his contract bought out by the New York Rangers. He's obviously proven that he can play with whatever it is that's got him in his pelvis area, whatever kind of an infection or weird thing it is, he can play with it because he has demonstrated this year that he is playing his best hockey. Smart veteran play by Clouston, too, because he knew that he could kind of get away with a little holding on that play and knock the guy to the ice and then have him fall on the puck to force the face off. You know what I'd do? If I were Emil Francis of the Hartford Whalers, I would invite Clouston to come to camp and then have him go against Brent Peterson in faceoffs and see how many Clouston could win. <laughs> we got one back on the ice. 30 seconds more for the other one. All right, by a four goes against... Goes up to Biden, but it's stolen away by Barnes. Barnes behind the Portland net. Wheeling and dealing on the fire play. 22 seconds to go past Jake. Shot went wide. Maybe Bad's guy got a piece of it. Yeah, he did. Pat saved. Nice All job. Right. That is LeBron at center ice. Eric's got the mojo going right now. He kind of found his rhythm and looks a whole lot more comfortable out there than he did the first period. Well, getting a little support, too. Now yeah, Barnes moving in. Barnes checked by, by a form. It gets around him. Then Middlestat helps out to block the shot. Good play, Middlestat. Shot LeBron deflected wide. They got Winter the back. Full strength. They have killed it all off, folks. A five-minute power play and a two-man advantage. Now they got to get through transition. Loose puck in front. Face on. Oh, big, big part of the hockey game. I'll tell you what, they deserve a standing ovation, and they're going to get one. Standing O at Memorial Coliseum for tremendous penalty killing. Timeout, 152 remaining second period score. Portland 6, Tri-Cities 4, back in 30. Shoals means foot comfort. In fact, Shoals air pillow insoles have double layers for double comfort. Shoals insoles are thin, durable, and ventilated to keep your feet cool and dry. Individually sized for proper fit, Shoals double layer insoles are available at your nearest Valley Right Pharmacy. Right, 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 at Valley Right, Valley Right. Check the yellow pages for the Valley Right Pharmacy nearest you. Faceoff coming outside the Tri-Cities line. Winterhawks leading by two. And let's check it out here. We got Fleetwood, Hamish, Terry Black, Moore, Mitchell. And a faceoff control by the Americans. Puck cleared in by Krause in the Portland zone. Mitchell's got a goal line on the right side. Whipping around the boards to Terry Black. Swing it into Hamish, and he shoots it away. Back to get it Krause. Now the Winterhawks need to continue to put on four-checking pressure without sacrificing defense. And I emphasize the latter. 
as Chanowitz has the puck ahead to Rennie. Cleared into Portland territory. Terry Black over to get it with a minute 17 to go in the period. Rink wide to Moore. Moore hustling out. Cross ice pass off the boards to Mitchell. Break to center ice. Cut around one Tri City checker and lifted into Tri City's territory. Cross in the corner. Bashed by Black. Now it's Duval stacked up by Fleetwood. Puck pops free. Hamish has got it for Portland. Go to middle stand at the point. Rich shot right on. Save. Colsey covered. Well, the Hawks are playing with a lot of intelligence right now. Timeout, 55 seconds to go in a period. 6-4 Portland back in 30. The fastest growing lodging chain in the West is growing faster. Shiloh Inns announces the opening of their latest Oregon Coast Resort at Newport. And Shiloh Inns will be opening soon in Tillamook, Mammoth Lakes, California, and Moses Lake, Washington. And if you're a skier, you don't have to be told about Mammoth Mountain. It's one of the most remarkable ski areas anywhere. And you've never experienced it properly until you experience it at the new Shiloh Resort, opening soon. Call 1-800-222-2244. Shiloh Inns. 55 seconds remaining to be played in the second period. And the Winterhawks, if you just joined us, the Hawks came out with great offense right from the start, but they were playing their whole hum defense, got in trouble, got down 4-2, to two, and since that time, they have scored four unanswered goals and have played, I think, just tremendous hockey at both ends of the ice. Indeed Ron. they have. Very little fault in their play here in the second period. By a four with a wrist shot that's stopped by Colzig to the Tri-Cities goaltender, nice outlet pass by the goaltender to Spinrath. Spinrath for Tri-Cities moving in. He's got Kennedy in front of the net, the pass out in front of him. Good defense by Holland. He was Oliver Kennedy. Uh-oh, uh, Bascott got caught. Or Bascott. One I of the think other. it was Bascott that flipped him up in the air with a goaltender stick. So it's going to be a Portland penalty. Let's take our final break station of the second period. 6-4 Winterhawks back in 30. If you're in the market for a new or used car, you should talk to First Interstate Bank. Because right now, First Interstate is making loans like never before. With extended terms, low monthly payments, and the flexibility to let you decide your down payment. Of course, certain restrictions apply, but with the right credit information, you'll have your loan within 24 hours. Stop by or call First Interstate Bank soon. First Interstate Bank, doing things your way. Fans are booing the call, but I can't understand why. Batscott took, I believe it was Troy Kennedy, and flipped him head over heels with his goaltender stick. They call it interference. They could have called it a variety of things. Tripping, hooking, mugging, <laughs> assault and battery. Anyway, it's a penalty against Batscott, and Mick will serve it. I don't think there's any question about it myself, although maybe they're saying that Kennedy was in the crease and deserved it. That could be, but it's kind of stretching a point. In any event, here's LeBron at the point with a slap shot. Stopped by Bad Scott, loose puck in to the corner by a four. Wrapped up by Kennedy. And now Barnes behind the net turns, throws it to the crease. <laughs> he got Bad Scott down, but he couldn't direct it on goal. Now Barnes with a puck. Stu Barnes in on three of the four Tri Cities goals. Pass into the slot to Kennedy. Back to Jake. Shot save Bad Scott in traffic. They go to the corner. LeBron keeping it alive. Barnes turns behind the net, centers. Lee, he nice defensive play at the buzzer. Great second period by your Winterhawks. Pepsi Fred Meyer scoreboard says Portland 6, Tri Cities 4, and action continues in just a moment. It's Johnson and Porter. A swift and conscientious prescription service, a unique gift selection, an excellent cosmetic section, and uncompromised personalized service that reminds you of the good old days of the corner drugstore. For local neighborhood service and friendliness, it's Century Pharmacy, your Washington County Value Right Pharmacy in Greenway Town Center and on Cornell Road in Cedar Mill. We're back. Winterhawks are asking the question, how do you follow an act like that? The last 20 minutes, maybe their best 20 minutes of the season, or at least their best 20 in a long time, as they kill off a two-man advantage. They kill off a five-minute Tri-Cities power play. They outscore the Americans 3 to nothing. They outshoot them 17 to 12 in that second period. Just an overall outstanding period for the Winterhawks. And they now lead 6 to 4 faceoff, controlled by Portland. And they shoot it away. Winterhawks are still a man short as they open up the third period. Barnes moving in around Middlestat, but he lost the puck from behind. Middlestat doesn't clear the zone. Here's LeBron in front, pass tip. Spinrath gets it, shot stop, bad scan. Loose puck in front, bad scan will fall on it. Or maybe Roy Mitchell did. I'm not sure who fell on what, but in any event, the puck is frozen in front of the Portland net. We'll have a face-up. 
And I think they might even bring the face off outside the blue line. So Tri-Cities had something to do with that stoppage of play. And right now, Stu Barnes is arguing with Tom Hansen about where they're bringing the face off. The face off is coming outside the Portland line and Barnes can't understand it. Portland leading six to four. Tri-Cities led in this hockey game four to two after Troy Kennedy's unassi or rather Sean LeBrun's goal at 13.48 in the first period. Here's Barnes moving in. He lost the puck on his forehand as he tried to deke out Baskin. Puck is in behind the net. Barnes gets it out to Jake's a drive. Save Eric Benskin and he covers. And Eric Benskin, as Ron Ross was saying, in that second period, seems to have found his rhythm. Boy, and we are all hoping that that is true because Eric, and he'll be the first one to admit it, has had some erratic times. Eric's first appearance in goal for Portland was in Kamloops. And he had an outstanding game. The Winterhawks winning their first road game back on October 10th, 5 to 3, with Badsgan between the pipes. Badsgan has had other great games. He shut out the Regina Pats here back in November, but it has been a little bit inconsistent. Badsgan has played very well tonight since the first 10 minutes. Now the Americans breaking out. LeBron break out past the Kennedy. He's in alone and scores. Well, Kennedy got loose at the Portland Blue Line and took the pass from LeBron and was in by himself and beats Benzgan with a forehand. And it is six to five. Portland now only by one. Power play goal for Troy Kennedy. And a really good outlet pass. Hit Kennedy right at the blue line. Actually, the Hawks had a pretty well defense. They had four guys from across the blue line, and Kennedy was able to split them. Spin wrap and Jake's on the assist. I didn't get the time. 109. 109. All right. Six to five. Winterhawks by one. Puck is in the Tri City zone. Trying to get it out, Murray Duval. Mitchell holds it in. In front, Mick turned around and dropped in front of the goal and actually went into the goal and dislodged it. Troy Mick is coming over to have some words with Tom Hansen. Well, Hansen saying that Mick is the one that uh, intentionally and without any assistance from any of the Tri-City Americans knocked the net loose, which means the point faceoff comes outside the blue line instead of staying inside the Tri-City zone. Looks like Mick got knocked to his nose by me but not by the referee so we will have the face off on the far side pepsi dot here in the third period if the winterhawks get any power plays opportunities it'll be margie knight of portland in our skippers power play contest for two hundred dollars in the jackpot margie james hamish black is our money man here in the third period i know the hamish would love to get a marker mitchell moving into the slot Back pass to Mick, open net, but the shot partially blocked. Brilliant defensive play by Chanowitz. And then Chanowitz puts Mick to the ice hard with a forearm. Mick's going to skate away. Well, I think We're going to get a penalty, I'm sure, on this one. It's going to match up because Mick, did right? re Mick responded. As he was going down, he took a punch back at Chanowitz. So, uh, he tried to get away with it, I guess. Yeah. And I, he did in my book because by the time I looked up, Mick had not responded. But they are going to match it up, it looks like. Timeout, 18-12 remaining. Pepsi Fred Meyer scoreboard says Portland 6, Tri-Cities 5, back in 30. It's Papa Aldo's best buy of the year and their most popular special, the large pepperoni pizza. Large, the big one. Now just $6.99 at all Papa Aldo's. Heaps of pepperoni, cheese, Papa's secret sauce, Portland's finest pizza, and always fresh ingredients. Large pepperoni now at Papa Aldo's, only $6.99. All right, puck is in the Tri-City zone. Both teams at full strength. Hamish Black chasing it in behind the net. Knocked off the puck by Jakes. And the Americans break out past Mrs. LeBrun and buy a four as it at center ice for Portland. Shoot it into Tri-City's territory. Jakes sidesteps uh, James Hamish Black check and it is knocked to the ice. Fleetwood and a puck stolen away 
LeBron the other way. He's checked by Flintoff, and Flintoff went eye-to-eye with him there for a moment, gave him the old hairy eyeball he did, Rob Flintoff, but LeBron wanted nothing to do with it. All right, here come the Hawks. No, Terry Black can't get a stick on it. Americans break the other way. We got tic-tac-toe going on at center ice. Finally, Terry Black out of traffic for Portland. The Hamish fan on it. He had Jake's on it. Spin round, dump it down the ice. Portland only up by one, and it's nervous time again. Middle stab back in the corner. Wait a minute. We got a bit of a... Well, we got icing, yeah, we got icing against Tri-Cities, and Brent Fleetwood was on his chin behind the play, and I think the fans wanted some kind of interference in tripping. I didn't see who the American was that caused the crime, but they got away with it, and we'll have a face-off in the Tri-City zone. I want to remind everybody that this Saturday morning, this Saturday morning is the Lions Portland Winterhawk Breakfast at Lions near the Coliseum. It's from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., and the only way you can go is with a ticket. The tickets are only $4, everybody. And you got to get them by Friday night's game against Prince Albert. So if you're coming to the game Friday night against Prince Albert, buy your breakfast tickets. There's about 70 of them left is all. So get your tickets at the booster table for only $4. The Winterhawks will be there to serve your breakfast. It's only $4, and they're putting on quite a feast. That's this Saturday morning at Lions. There'll be no tickets at the door. You've got to buy them at the booster table Friday night if you want to go. Want to emphasize that, no tickets at the door on Saturday. If you don't have a ticket, you don't get in. So get your ticket for $4 is all it costs for the Lions breakfast for this Saturday morning. Buy it at Friday night's hockey game, and that's how you can go. Might enthusiasm Clouston forward line. Puck kicked across to the Tri-Cities territory. Both teams at full strength. Winterhawks leading by only one, six to five. And a puck caroms back into Portland territory. Joey Mendelstadt to Mitchell. Mitchell guns it ahead intended for Biden. It's through him into Tri-Cities territory. Icing his eye and Delcourt touches the puck face up. Things oh. are getting a little bit owly yeah. right now. Biden just took a two-handed whack on the backside, I think, of Frank Malone. Yep, it is Malone. And then some pushing and shoving going on because of that. Scotty has kind of lost his cool for a moment. I don't know whether Hanson's going to call anything. He's going to match something up. Maiden should go, and quite frankly, should uh, get an extra two, in my estimation. All right, Tom Hanson's going to meet it out here. And we'll take a timeout. With the score, Portland 6, Tri-Cities 5. On a Betsy Fred Meyer scoreboard, back at 30. Since 1956, DeVault's has been setting the standard for auto body work in Portland. Now, more than 30 years later, DeVault's Unitech Auto Body combines the best crew with state-of-the-art computerized equipment to produce auto body work that is guaranteed for two years in writing. Plus, DeVault's Unitech provides the latest technology for two- and four-wheel drive alignment, brake service, and wheel balancing. And DeVault's has free loaner cars by appointment while your car is being repaired. That's DeVault's Unitech Auto Body, 7th and Southeast Division. Call 232-3300. Dean Broman and Ron Ross broadcast Road Memorial Coliseum. Winterhawks with a 6-5 lead, 1641 to go. We have matching minors to Malone of Tri-Cities, Mine in a Portland delay of game at 319. All right. Here's a slap shot by Dirksen, blocked out in front. And Portland's Greg Lee, he has a puck in the Winterhawks zone down to our left. Portland moving left to right, and they lose it. But Lee, he gets it back again. It slides off his stick into the corner, and Rennie able to poke the puck, but Flint's off there to control for the Winterhawks. Flint's off to Gourley, out at center ice. And it'll be stolen away by Kennedy, but then Gourley gets it back for Portland. Lead pass for Lee, out of his reach. Loose puck at center ice. Nobody wants it. Button, button, who's got the button? Rennie pushed off it by Gourley, still at center ice. Price cities Duval spinning away from one or two Winterhawks. Get it ahead to Kennedy. Kennedy penetrate the Portland line, mugged by Flintoff. Puck on the boards. Gorley and Flintoff are there to shoot it away. Dirksen back at the Tri-City blue line. Winterhawk up, six to five. Right now, 15.50 remaining. Fleetwood back at his own blue line. Behind a back pass to Flintoff. Natalie, he work it to Holland. Holland up in it on a play. And a puck goes to the Tri-Cities Americans. Rob Krause, center ice pass to Duval. Duval with two Winterhawks back, loses the puck. By a four. Up to Middlestead, out of his reach. Puck at center ice. Joey makes a nice play to free the puck for Fleetwood. Looking for Leahy. It'll be grabbed and held by Kolzig for a face-up. 
Professional service personal touch. Portland hockey equipment and skate supplier is Conyers Hockey Hut. 297-5449. 297-5449 for Conyers. Here's another opportunity to socialize with the Winterhawks. You can have dinner with a Winterhawk player at your table at Tony Roma's near the Coliseum this coming Monday. No, I'm sorry, a week from Monday. It'll be a week from Monday. February 6th is the date. And a Winterhawk menu of chicken, fish, or ribs from 1095 to 1295, including tip and beverage will be offered. And for the tickets, you can call 232-5559 for reservations. Call for reservations, 232-5559. They'll take your reservation right now at Tony Roma's near the Coliseum for dinner with the Winterhawks. February 6th. Middle stand at the point. Wrist shot deflected to the corner by Colsey. And Fleetwood keeps it alive. Tahina put it behind the net. Terry Black takes it away from Jinx. But then his double team. We're going to point that his stick held. No call. Shot by Middlestat is deflected. And here's LeBron back the other way. Well, looks like it's going to be really rough to get a power play here in the third period. Good hip check by Middlestat. But LeBron's got the puck. Weak shot handled by Bansko. Hamish in the corner. So the Winterhawks need to adapt their style of play. Hansen maybe are a little reluctant to give a power play in the third period, so the Hawks are going to get tougher. Now behind the net, Krauss behind his own goal to my right. Good hit by Thudia, but it was long after the puck left, so it comes to center ice, and Flintoff got it. Flintoff to Clouston. Clouston loses the puck at center to Barnes again, and Barnes is really taken out effectively by Biafor. Jakes keeping it alive for the Americans. Puck goes wide of the goal. Thudia's got it. Oh, the Hawks are punishing Barnes. Fleetoff just gave him a forearm behind the play. Oh, I can't believe it. Hansen's letting all this go. This is well, amazing. And uh, one of the uh, Tri-City Americans, I thought it was Dirksen, got knocked on his beak as well. Boy, I'll tell you, Barnes just got hammered on that shift. Fleetoff really nailed it. Here's a wrist shot that goes wide on a puck off the boards. Held in by Chanowitz. It's in the slot in the Portland zone. Fry looking behind the net for Delcourt. Stolen away by Biafor. Here comes Biafor out of back, guys, for the Portland Winterhawks. Chad Biafor played in the All-Star game last night. He, too, was in on a goal. Biafor put it in a corner. It's stolen away by Kraus. Kraus wristed around the boards to Kalowitz out of his reach. Mick keeps it alive. Nice pass. Holland to Lee. He, oh, it was behind him. Middle stat slap shot. Blocked at the defense, and Kraus has the puck. Rob Kraus. Long pass center ice to Robertson off his stick in the Portland zone. Young 16-year-old Robertson. For the Americans, it's pretty rough for the 16-year-olds in this league anymore. This is tough hockey for the young kids. Middlestead, over to Mitchell. Mitchell looking ahead, stolen away by Kennedy. Here he comes. Kennedy, slap shot, blocked by Middlestead and sent out of here. Timeout, 12.43 to go, 6-5, Portland back in 30. Think about the things that matter most. Broker, we know that you can count on Safeco Insurance for claims service that's prompt, courteous, and fair. Call for a free Safeco quote for any of your insurance needs. It's important to you. It's important to us. Call your independent Greater Portland Area Safeco agent. Twelve forty-three remaining. Third period. Portland six, Tri Cities five. Prince Albert is here on Friday night. And Sunday night, Victoria, and again, we want to remind all of you fans that attend the next two Sunday night games, Victoria this Sunday night, Kamloops the following Sunday night, and get a complete set of Portland Winterhawk trading cards, courtesy of Pepsi and Fred Meyer. All the players, full-color pictures, all the information, it's absolutely free just by attending the next two Sunday games. Winterhawks going to pass in front of Fleetwood, and a shot went wide. Might have been partially blocked from behind. Here come the Americans to center ice. Winterhawks by one. Outlet pass to Duval, breaking across the line, spin it in front of the net, intended for Rennie, and he's knocked off the puck in front by a Winterhawk defenseman, Chad Biaford. Now Biaford to the boards, trying to pry it away, does, but Shersteka keeps it alive in front to Rennie, shot blocked by Flintoff. Behind the net, Rennie, still with a puck. Now to Kennedy, shot, save bad skin. Loose puck in the corner, Fleetwood. Fleetwood's in trouble with Kennedy on him, wheeling up the boards to Hamish, and he lifts it in the air and out of trouble. 11.56 remaining. Portland leading 6-5, to five, but it will be Winterhawk icing.
I'd like to remind you at the Pizza Blast at Smokies in Vancouver at Cascade Park on Monday, January 30th. That's this coming Monday. Sponsored by the Booster Club. All proceeds go to the scholarship fund. Smokies will make the most generation donation, a generous donation ever. From 7 until 9 o'clock at Smokies in Vancouver in Cascade Park. The entire team will be there and door prizes will be available. Six to five, Portland. Here's a loose puck in the Winterhawks zone. Middle stack got it to the boards, held in by Conowitz. Shot of the Portland defense. Winterhawks have got it. Close to parking it. It's all right. Got minded with him. The pass behind Scotty. Unfortunate. LeBron ahead to Barnes. Watch out. Watch 14. Barnes at Spinrath. Here they come. Mitchell breaks it up. Puts it on the stick of LeBron. And a marvelous save by Vanskai. Oh! Mitchell did the right thing. He was able to cut off the pass and knock it back up ice and unfortunately gave it right to an American. And fortunately, Bad Gun stayed in position for all of that. Well, if Mitchell had it to do over, the one thing he might have done differently was sweep the puck to the boards. But I think it just bounced off his Yeah, I don't, I don't think he had time to really know what to do with it. He didn't really have time to think about it, and he was, his momentum was carrying him back anyway. So the only thing he could have really done was maybe, uh, maybe pull it back with him and take it in behind the net. But uh, there were already two Americans there, so that wouldn't have necessarily been a smart play either. All right, puck in the Portland zone still. Close to on the far boards has got it to Flintoff. Out to Thudium. Stolen away by Chadowitz. Uh-oh. Offside, you got cut. Offside, Tri-City. Chadowitz is barking at Thudium. And I'll tell you, Calvin had his fruit and fiber this morning. He has been bumping, and he has been in action tonight. Thudium is trying to win a spot on some line. He's been on no line lately, and Ken Hodges kind of got him in the doghouse again a little bit after he got out of the doghouse for a couple of games. They are looking for Calvin Thudium to assert himself consistently. They want him to play both ends of the ice and play physical because he's a big boy, and that's the way he's going to have to play to make it to the National Hockey League. Maiden, go to Biafor. Pass in front intended for Maiden on a return broken up. Here comes Price Cities the other way. And we got a whistle behind the play, and somebody got caught. A high stick on Kelly Katowicz. Biafor should go to the box as well, but Hanson didn't see it. And why do you say that, partner? Did Biafor do something to deserve the retaliation? Might have been a little of the shiatsu that he gave uh, Katowicz there up under the visor. In the period of number three, Kelly Katowicz, two minutes for high sticking. Katowicz for high sticking, time of the penalty, 8.49. But that's part of hockey. Off times, officials, and it's not even just hockey. It happens in football. It happens in basketball. Officials will see the retaliation. And in that case, uh, both Biafor and Shadowitz kind of got into it a little bit. And Shadowitz, or uh, Biafor definitely gave Shadowitz a poke to the chin. And Kelly responded with a high stick. And that's what drew the attention of Tom Hansen. And your skipper's power play contestant, Margie Knight of Portland. James Hamish Black, the money man for $200. If Hamish scores a power play goal in the third period, Margie Knight of Portland wins $200 in cash from Skippers. If you want to play the contest, go to Skippers. That's all you got to do and sign up. Holland moving on the left wing, pass, slot, flat, Mick behind the back to Lee. He knocked away. By a four, keep it in the right point with Barnes on it. Behind the net, Dennis Holland. Kind of silent tonight. Dennis only has one goal, no assist so far. Go to buy a four, deep slot shot. His blocked out in front. They go to the corner. Mick Ropen, Delphi to the boards, get a loose puck. Pass intended for Holland out of his reach. Holland gets it back. Point by a four. Winterhawks leading by one, trying to add to it. Here's a shot by by a four. Caroms to the corner. Holland, dig it out by a four. Slap shot. That one just wide, and he was looking for a deflection from Leahy, but he just missed it. And the Americans shoot it away. That was a pretty nice setup there between Biafor and Lee. He just barely missed connections because Lee, he had a wide open net. He could have got a stick out of it. Biafor to Mick. Center ice. Winterhawks set up the power play. Mick stuffs it in a Tri-City zone. Fry right back out with it. Hawks will have to reorganize at center. 50 seconds to go on a power play. Oh, look at this. Ready all over Mitchell. No call. Well, it's going to take a, a very, very physical play to get a two-man advantage in the third period. Mitchell behind his own net. Roy Mitchell with a putt. Winterhawks moving left to right. Outlet to middle stat. Middle stat to Mick. Kick it on to Hamish. Tied up by Kraus. Leahy's got it outside the line. Leahy middle stat. Penetrate and drive it in. Tri-Cities is the number two penalty killing team in the Western Hockey League. And they're showing you why right now. They're doing a great job at their blue line. Winterhawks unable to penetrate. Mitchell back in his own zone now. 
Get it to Middlestead. Ten seconds to go on a power play. Winterhawks leading six to five. Nine nineteen remaining in the game. Fleetwood down the right side. Fleetwood checked by Schurstenkin. Circle the net. Point. Middle stat. Shoot on the fly. Uh-uh. Didn't get good wood on it. Watch out. Somebody's out of the penalty box. Conowitz breaking in. Two-line pass. Thank you very much. Oh, Winterhawks nearly very careless there. Really scary. And a little communication lapse on the part of the Winterhawks that were on the ice. Somebody's got a holland that the penalty is over and the guy is out of the box. Because I'll be honest with you, I didn't think it was a two-line pass, but apparently it wasn't made before the player crossed the Tri-Cities blue line. But uh, certainly, uh, Katowicz, who came out of the box, looked to me like he was going to be onside. All right, face off control by Tri-Cities. And it is Scherstenko to center ice. Dan Scherstenko flipping into the Portland zone. Flint up. Has it. Rip it up the boards, and it's cleared by Thudium to the Tri-Cities line. Jakes. Corral the puck in his own face-off circle. Taking it to Spindrath. Knocked off the puck by Thudium, and now Biden's got it. Biden wrist in the corner to Clouston. Clouston checked by Schersticken. The Americans have the puck. Hawk stack it up. Clouston's got it. Uh-uh. Couldn't get a full stick on it, then steals it back. Clouston drive the slot. We're shot. Stopped by Colzik. Penalty. Oh. Penalty on Schersticka for you bugging bet. Scotty Biden. Holding on Dan Schersticka. And once again, Scott B. Miden, the little 5-6 bundle of energy, stuck his nose in and is rewarded. Timeout 8.30 remaining. Winterhawks get a power play. Score Portland 6, Tri-Cities 5, back in 30. Hey, Davey, trade you my peanut butter and jelly sandwich for your bologna? Uh-uh. My chips? Nope. My cookies? Forget it. For sandwiches your kids will love, get bar Race lunch meats from your Fred Meyer Food Department. bar Race lunch meats are made from selected cuts of USDA beef and pork and cooked with special seasonings to make tender, meaty slices. Pick up all your kids' favorite bar Race lunch meats at Fred Meyer today. Remember, only the best is branded bar Race, and you'll find it at Freddy's at all stores except Sixth and Alder. All right, Moore checking for Portland keeps the puck in. Hawks on a power play, hollow with a drive, deflected by Leahy, but Kolzik still got a piece of it. Mick in the corner. Oh, the Winterhawks really would love to get one here. Moore, shot, stick save, Kolzik into the crowd. Now let's set the power play combination. It'll be Leahy, Holland, and Mick up front with Moore and Mitchell on the blue line. Rick Kleinhardt Brewery is open for tours again. Call the brewery for details. Tour the West's oldest and finest brewery and enjoy the Blitz Weinhardt Hospitality Room. Boy, if you've never been to Blitz Weinhardt to get that tour and then go to the hospitality room, you're really missing out because the hospitality room is done in the old traditional style of Henry Weinhardt. It's really a beautiful room. Very enjoyable tour. Here's Moore with a shot deflected by Leahy just wide. Now Mitchell with a puck. Or rather Mick. Goal line on the right side. Mick has it. Flipping it behind to Leahy. Give and go. They got Mick all covered. Leahy can't make the pass. Skated out on the boards. Greg Leahy still has a puck for Portland. Winterhawks need a power play goal. They're only up by one. Here's Moore, a drive. Kicked out by Colzig. Rebound shot the length of the ice. Son of a gun. Good setup. Good shot by Moore. Just didn't go in. 105 remaining on the penalty to Scherstenkin. Winterhawks in their own zone. And with it, Mitchell. Up to Dennis Holland. Holland doing his thing at center. Now penetrate the line in on Kraus. Kraus gets him into the boards. Puck pops free. Mick's got it behind the net. Got Leahy in front, but can't thread the needle. Mick goes to the point instead to buy a fourth. Buy a four. Mick, cross ice, Mitchell and drive. Oh, and pulls it got a stick on that as Leahy again out in front trying to create traffic. Now Mick, Leahy, goal line to the right side. Greg with a puck. Whip it out to the faceoff circle. Now they get it to Mitchell. Quick pass. Holland jumped his stick. Centers it through the slot. Nobody there. Buy a four keeps it alive on the right point. Shot blocked. Fry. Now it is Mitchell. Wristing it along the boards to Holland. Pinched in there by Conowitz. Boy, Tri-City's doing a nice job here. 14 seconds to go on a Portland power play. Holland, Mitchell at the point. Whip it along the boards to Holland. Watch by Conowitz. Back it comes to Mitchell. A slap shot. Pulls it safe. Rebound. Still loose and they couldn't find the handle. Clear to the boards. Holland digs it out. Power plays over. Hawks still have the puck. By a four. Off the boards to Holland. Oh, my. Is he smashed by Schurstenkin. Puck still in the Tri-City zone. Mitchell, corner to Mick. 
Hit a notch in the boards. Holland goes after it. Kicks it loose for Mitch. Shot saved. Colzing. Rebound. Holland shot saved. Colzing. Oh, Holland shot it right into Olaf Colzig. Because Colzig, you could tell by his reaction, just happened to be standing in the right place. It hit him, and then all of a sudden he looked and realized that the puck had come on goal. Boy, it's amazing Holland could even get it through to the goal because he was shooting through everybody, including the kitchen sink, to try to get it at Colson. So that power play goes away, and now the Hawks and the Americans are back to five-on-five five hockey. Hamish Black, Harry Black, Brent Fleetwood. This line has one marker tonight. Although I guess it was Gurley with Hamish Black and Terry Black, not Fleetwood. So the lines continue to mix and match tonight a little bit. Still a ton of time left. Over six minutes and Portland only up by one. So it's scary time again. The Hawks just can't win them easy. Middlestat shoots it in on goal. And Kolzig leaves it behind the net to Devin Dirksen. Checked by Terry Black for the loose puck comes to who? It is Tri-Cities New Balance center ice. Checked by Hamish. And now Jake's with a foot. Takes to Kennedy, spraying free at the Portland blue line. Kennedy takes it in, pants in front to Duval, shot just wide. Puck behind the net, Kennedy tried to stuff it, and he was cut off, and the Winterhawks have the foot. James Hamish Black, center ice to Fleetwood, tipping in the corner. Fleetwood being hooked by Jakes, no call. Now gets around, jerks it, gets to the puck in the corner. Pass, knocked away, loose puck, might it turn, shot it wide. Kennedy with a puck. On our right wing boards, Kennedy skated into center ice for Tri-Cities, dumps it into the Portland zone. Winterhawks still doing a pretty good job defensively here. By a four. Oh, my. Did Duvall hit him. Loose puck to LeBron. LeBron's pass intercepted by Scotty Miden. Miden for Portland. Center ice. Clouston out of his reach. And Tri-Cities will chase the puck back in. I see. I think. Going to have to be the call, and it'll bring it back into the Portland zone. 5-0-2 remaining. I want to remind you, Prince Albert is here Friday night. Mike Modano will not play because of a broken arm that he sustained last night in the All-Star game. Mike Modano out maybe for the season with a broken arm. Yeah, we got a news release, a uh, copy of the news wire copy from uh, Associated Press, courtesy of Jim Basita, and it says he is expected to be out two to three months after a break in the bone to his left wrist. So apparently the operation was done by the Minnesota North Stars team doctor, William Simonette, but uh, Modano is going to be out for probably the remainder of the year. The Hawks are still looking to an avenge a 13-6 loss that they took to Prince Albert in November. So be here Friday night and watch revenge occur Friday night with Prince Albert in 10. And remember to carpool or take a bus or max or something try to get here without four wheels because if you get four wheels here chances are you can't park it or find a creative way to get here if you're planning to go to the auto show go yeah. that night come early and uh stop by the bob lamphier display that's even a better idea you get bet. a season ticket for the rest of the season buy a car now mitchell Leahy, center right. Leahy moving in. Leahy dodges a check, drives in on that. Holds it, Pope gets him, but we're going to get a penalty against Price City. Oh, great move by Greg Leahy. He took wow. about three guys out to us. That was a do see do I'll tell you, timeout, 4.09 to go score. Portland 6, Tri cities 5. On a Pepsi Fred Meyer scoreboard back in 30. Now is your chance to see the highest quality used premium RVs all under one roof. It's House of Hardtops RVs with over 30,000 square feet of indoor showroom at Hayden Island. You can afford a luxury RV with incredible sound systems, two-color TV sets, built-in bars, and modern appliances, and all the conveniences of home. If you're interested, call this number, 503-286-2277. That's 503-286-2277. House of Hardtops RVs. You're a part of Winter Hot Country on KWJJ AM Portland. Winter Hawks with a puck, more at the point. Kristen in front, knocked away. Now Moore gets it back, and then it's cleared by Delcourt. Now I was talking with Rich Waltz, the Spokane radio broadcaster, when they made that trade where Delcourt went to Tri-Cities. He says, you know, Delcourt does an awful lot of things you don't see. And since he made that comment, I've watched him, and he's absolutely right. Delcourt can win a lot of hockey games for you. Buy a four slap shot. He's stopped by Colsey. Hawks dig it up. Buy a four with a puck on a point. Now they go to Moore. Right face off circle, wristed in front. Lee, he was open, didn't know he was. Goes back to Moore, slap shot, save. Colzig, rebound, scramble, loose pocket front. Score! Dennis Holland! Get 
Chris Holland's second goal of the game, his 17th goal of the season against Tri-Cities in eight games. Is that amazing? He's got to have a big smile on his face when he sees TC on the schedule. A power play goal scored at 16.29 in the period by number 15, Dennis Holland. Two on the night, 59 for the year. Mike Moore, number 11, Chad Biafor. Holland from Warren Biafor, the power play goal at 16.29. And he already has, what, four hat tricks against Tri-City? Yeah, isn't that something? He's got the possibility for a fifth. He's got eight on the season. How about an empty net goal for Dennis Holland? I like it. Clayton Howard. Young got one to get his fifth the other night. Do not light up the victory cigar yet, folks. It's only a two-goal lead with three minutes to go, and in the Western Hockey League, that is not safe. Winterhawks need to watch their P's and Q's here. Duval with a puck. Get it to Jakes. Watched by Minen at his own blue line. Rick wide to Conowitz. Price Cities needs to get an attack going, but the Hawks are going to play D. Mark on a Portland zone. Flintoff behind his own net. Flintoff needs to make the intelligent play. Risks it out of the zone. Oh, no, he doesn't. Sir Stanky yeah, stole did. it. Wait a minute. Yep, it did cross the line. I thought Sir Stanky almost held that in for a moment. It was close, but not close enough. So the Winterhawks now, Ken Hodge is going to send out Dennis Holland for a mix. And uh, let's see, Greg Leahy, who has been on the left wing on this line. Hey, everybody, remember Victoria Sunday night and be here to get your first part of your full set of Portland Winterhawk training cards. Full color picture on the front and all the information about each individual player on the back. Individual training cards, just like baseball cards with your Winterhawks all over them. And that'll be courtesy of Pepsi and Fred Meyer. Sunday night. And remember, everybody, in order to get a complete set of trading cards, you've got to be here the next two Sunday nights. That's the only requirement. Just come to the game, and they're free, courtesy of Pepsi and Fred Meyer. The next two Sunday nights, Portland Winterhawk trading card nights. Tickets available at the Coliseum box office and G.I. Joe's for Sunday night's game against Victoria. It's a 6 o'clock face-off. 7, seven to 5. Portland by two now, 226 remaining. This is the only game in the Western Hockey League tonight, so the Hawks can go back to five points in front of Victoria with a win if they can hang on to it. And they win the faceoff in their own zone. Middle stat shoots at nine out. Uh -huh. Jake's keeping it alive, rolling around the boards. Barnes behind the net. Barnes centers, knocked away by Mitchell. Loose puck shot through the crease. Now Troy Mick with a puck for Portland. Mick skates it into center ice, 2-11 to go. Winterhawks leading 7-5. to Mick back to Holland at the red line. Holland penetrate, hip check by Jake. That is LeBron flipping it up the boards, and it's stacked up and flipped out of play by Leahy, so that'll bring the face off where? Outside the line, I would assume. Timeout, 2.02 to go. Final break with a score. Portland 7, Tri-Cities 5 on the Pepsi Fred Meyer Stormer back in 30. If you're in charge of setting up large group functions of any kind, you're making a bad mistake if you don't consider Shiloh in. Consider Shiloh Inn at Idaho Falls. Just open with 162 guest rooms, indoor pool and spa, steam sauna and exercise room, all the extras at a reasonable price, and convention facilities to handle up to 1,000 people. Many Shiloh locations are able to fully cater to the needs of large groups. For details, call 1-800-222-2244. Shiloh Inn. All right, puck in the Tri-City zone. Duval's got it. 148 to go. Winterhawks trying to win for the sixth time against Tri-Cities this year. Kolzig's got his nose up. He's trying to get directions from uh, the temporary coach, Jerry Johansson, as to whether he wants him out of the net or not. Right now he can't because Hamish Black just dumped it back into the Tri-Cities end. Isn't that a wonderful place to see the puck right now? Oh, it's a goal lead. You love to see it in the Tri-City zone. However, the Winterhawks watching their P's and Q's. Here comes Kolzig. Here comes Kolzig. No, he's not. Line. Conowitz throws it in. Penalty coming up. Uh-oh. Penalty coming up. What do we got here? Interference. Holy torpedoes. After a third period where almost everything went, Hansen is called Klusman for interference. I, I, I wish I had another break. I didn't see it. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it, so I'm going to shut up. Klusman for interference. Time of the penalty, 1842. That's just an amazing call because of the way he's called the period. Now, Tri-Cities has skated shorthanded three times in this period, but all those penalties, in my opinion, were obvious calls to make. Now, this one on Clouston, a very much of a 
Borderline call to make in the third three. Okay, that's enough. Six power play for Tri right. City. And I they now will go with an empty net and a two man advantage. This game is not over yet, folks. 118 to go. Can neither corroborate nor debate you on the call because I was watching uh, Kolzik start, stop, start, stop, getting off the ice. Now, whatever it was, it was not obvious. We've seen so many flagrant things go uncalled here in the third three. All right, Jakes with a shot blocked at the defense. Loose puck in front. Mitchell gets it, but not out. And it is an empty net. Yep. Two-man advantage, in essence, for Tri-Cities here. Two-man advantage because they go with an empty net. Shot by Jakes went wide and out of play. Well, let's see. Dennis Holland intercepts a centering pass and risks it the length of the ice for the hat trick. How do you like that I'd like scenario? It. I'd All like right. it. 105 remaining. Actually, it doesn't necessarily have to be Holland. Any guy in a white shirt would do. Now we're going to get a timeout Tri-Cities. All right. Jerry Johansson, former New Westminster Bruin player, and a spotlight on him as he is the head coach of the Americans tonight in the absence of John Oliver. John Oliver, we are told, suffering some stomach problems and was very, very sick on the last Tri-Cities road trip. Had to stay an extra day or two in a motel in Kamloops. That was and the hospital, too. Got taken to the hospital. hospital. Yep. So Jerry Johansson running the bench tonight. And he'd like to pull one out of the fire. This game is not over. A lot of people probably figure a two-goal lead with a minute five to go is safe. But uh-uh. We have seen it too many times. The Winterhawks have got to play intelligent now. Tri-Cities with an empty net. They've got a two-man advantage with the power play. Two-man advantage because of their empty net. They only have a one-man advantage in essence, but they've gone with six Gators with an empty net. So it's a six on four. Barnes for the faceoff against Mighty. Barnes wins a draw. LeBron, left point. Winterhawks with a two-goal lead. LeBron, James. Wrist shot, deflected by Spinrath, and stopped by Vanskine. Loose puck clear to line. Mitchell, I think, shot at the length of the ice. Missed the net, however. It's going to be ice in Portland. And we got a penalty. We've got a penalty. We've got a penalty on Steve Rennie. Roughing. Thank you, Steve Rennie. Well, I think they're going to give it to Duval. I mean, du Murray Duval, you're right. Murray Duval. So there goes your power play. Boy, that's a really, really bonehead penalty to take. 11 of the period to number 11 Murray Duvall two minutes for roughing Duvall for roughing time at the penalty 19 11 now they're debating as to where the face off should come and they're going to hold it at center ice the reason I say it's a real dumb penalty is if you're going to take a penalty it's got to be trying to get to the puck yeah the goal or something it occurred way out at center ice or it's a frustration penalty or trying to set a screen and getting an interference call or something along those lines but a roughing call behind the play is the not smart hockey so barring a total Winterhawk collapse, that should do it. Portland's up by two, 49 seconds to go. Kolzig has to come back out onto the ice, but he's only about 10 feet inside the blue line and will come off the ice if the Americans can get the puck into the Portland zone. The problem Portland has right now is Sean Clouston, Mr. Faceoff, is in the penalty box. And the Hawks lost the faceoff. Barnes shoots, Vanscon, save and cover. Great save, Eric Vanscon. On Stu Barnes, there's still 43 seconds left, and now Colzig goes to the bench. So Tri-Cities will have five skaters on the ice. They'll have Barnes, Kennedy, Spinrath, LeBron, and Jakes. 43 seconds to go. So they lose their power play. Thanks to a roughing call on Duval at center ice at 1911. Boy, if that's not enough to make you cringe. All right, Americans win the faceoff. Here's a shot by Jake, saved by Vanscon, and the Winterhawks have the puck. Terry Black, the center ice, got an empty net. He shoots, he scores! Terry Black! You can light up that victory, Stokey. It is eight to five, Portland with 34 seconds to go as Terry Black gets the empty net counter. Portland is at 19.26 in the period. An unassisted empty net goal scored by number nine, Terry Black. His 25th of the season. Terry Black unassisted on the empty net goal at 19.26. His 26th of the season, excuse me. 
Riders Tri-Cities, one last gas. They've got their net back uh, full again. Kolzig is in, a shot by Jakes is wide. 23 seconds to go. Winterhawks long rebound. Mitchell, partial breakaway. Mitchell takes it in, and Kolzig makes the save, I do believe, on Oh, Mitchell. my. Oh. Gee, Jake just buried. Who is it? Scotty Myden? That's terrible. Well, now, this is after he'd already tomahawked him as well, but he checked him from behind right into the end board. That is and it terrible. Should, it should be a five-minute major in a game misconduct or a gross misconduct to Mr. Jakes. It isn't going to have any outcome on the game. Joey well, Middlestad's hovering around over there. Well, he we, wants it. We got Mike nice. tied up with Stu Barnes. Terry Black is eyeball to eyeball with LeBron. We're going to get a fight. Biden and Barnes. Biden and Barnes in a fight. Biden's giving away a little, but not a lot. Oh, boy, he caught him good. Look at Scotty Biden. Maiden is on Barnes, and he dropped him to the ice. Scotty Maiden, with two right, drops Stu Barnes to the ice. 5-6, Scotty Maiden. And they are going nuts. And this, after Scotty got hammered into the end boards on a vicious check from Steve Jake, who had earlier two hot, two-handed tomahawk back in the Portland zone. Jake, who had 335 penalty minutes last year. I'll tell you, Joey Middlestep wanted to get Jake's, but they kept him away from him. But then Maiden and Barnes square off, and Maiden just pounded Barnes with two rights into the ice. Wally. All of this with the Winterhawks leading 8-5. to five. And this was all brought on by an unnecessary cheap shot, courtesy yes. of Steve Jakes. He had no reason to do what he did. He's down by three goals with 14 seconds to go. There is absolutely no chance to win the game and no reason to hit somebody from behind like this. Not in the least. And like I said, it was out already after Jakes had taken the two-handed whack at Maiden back in the Portland zone that Hanson either did not see and did not call or, uh, or simply did not see, I mean. And well, then Maiden gets blasted from behind in the Portland zone, comes up and beats Stu Barnes in a fight. We've seen Scotty Maiden do amazing things all year, but we've really never seen him drop his gloves. Hey, he can throw them. Period. For Tri-Cities, number 14, Stu Barnes. For Portland, number 8, Scott Maiden, both five minutes for fighting. Barnes and Maiden for fighting. For Tri-Cities, yep. number four, Steve Jakes, a five-minute match penalty for deliberate to injure. Yep, that's about what it should be. Good call, and that means possible suspension by the Western Hockey League. Well, that means automatic suspension. Jakes, a five-minute match penalty. That's right, a match is automatic. A deliberate intent to injure. Time of the penalty, 1946. The length of the suspension is determined by the Western Hockey League. That's right, but he is automatically suspended now. And some fans, some Portland fans, I think, getting a little upset with the Tri-City Americans. A couple well, of them tried to rush the bench, and we've got to... Uh, now, we don't need any of No, that. we don't. We've also got a lot of Tri-City fans here tonight, and they're not in a good mood, and I don't blame them, because... But we've got Coliseum security, along with some ushers down in the area, and they broke it all up. But a very, very cheap shot by Steve Jakes, unfortunately. Scotty Mide not only was all right, he was all right to... Get up, challenge two bars, and hammer him back to the ice. All of this with only 14 seconds remaining, and let's hope we can all get out of here with an 8-5 win. Oh, I tell you, it's guys like Maiden and Theron Flurry. Although Flurry was a little bit dirty at times. Well, you know, Scotty Maiden Flurry was never a cheap shot, but what yeah. I'm leading up to is this whole emphasis of size in the National Hockey League. Yeah, you're right. And when you get when you get to a point where you've got a decision between a guy 5'8 and a guy 6'2, sure, maybe go for the bigger guy if everything else is equal. But the little guys can give you their heart just as well. Hawks win the draw. Middlestat, Mitchell, Terry Black, and Gorley are on the ice. And Middlestat's on the ice for one reason right now, and that's if anything happens, he's going to be out there to defend people. Now Gorley with a slap shot. That'll end it. We're going to get a fight. Middlestat and Spinrath at the buzzer. Mitchell and Spinrath. Oh, it's Mitchell. All right. Mitchell and Spinrath at the buzzer are grappling. Now let's make sure everybody's going to their bench. Ken Hodge watching the situation carefully, making sure that everything's under control as Spinrath and Mitchell continue to 
grapple and boy Spinrath getting the best of Roy there early but Mitchell now retaliating still standing up trying to get loose Mitchell unable to throw any as Spinrath has him tied up Spinrath pretty well delivering all the blows so far well what does Spinrath have in his hand or is just his sleeve that far down it must be one of the pads off of his arm yep I think you're right Mitchell and Spinrath continue to go. Mitchell is not going down. He's trying to wrestle Spinrath down. Spinrath won't let him loose to throw any punches. I'm not sure how many times Spinrath connected, but it looks I don't really well. think he did. He threw yeah. a couple down underneath, but I think that uh, they kind of caught Mitch in the chest. Mitchell and Spinrath are now in the net in the Portland zone. And the linesman trying to wrestle them apart, but boy, I'll tell you, we got a couple of big boys here. Yeah, we Spinrath do. gets one in over the break, and now they'll finally get them apart. So let's keep it right here. This is a pretty volatile situation. Make sure everybody goes to their respective dressing rooms with no more problem. Tom Hansen is saying, Portland, go to your room. At least the players near the bench. So Gorley well, he's, he's and sitting Black the people go. on the ice now off of the uh, off of the ice, and now he's sending all of the Tri City Americans off and leaving the Winterhawks on the bench for now. And the linesmen are in between. And thank goodness the Western Hockey League is a lot more cognizant of these kinds of situations to not let them get out of control. I'm proud to say we have not had a bench clearing brawl this year, and I think we only, I don't know if we had one last year. I'm having, I don't recall. We haven't had one in a long time, and thank goodness that they are taking these precautions. And now that Tri-City's totally off the ice, they allow the Winterhawks to go. The important thing is the Winterhawks win the game. Final score, Portland eight, Tri-City's five. Action continues in just a moment. Here's another good reason to shop. That's right. 